Dente Rigamortis. I'm Review Cultist. I'm Mikey. The E stands for evil. And I'm the gamer in yellow. And we're here to discuss those internet stories, most creepy and most pasta, and be critically silly doing it. And tonight we have Downpour. So, Downpour is a creepypasta on creepypasta.wiki or creepypasta wikia. What is it? Uh, hang on. Creepypasta.fandom.com slash wiki slash downpour. <laughs> And it is by Imperial Invective, which I think we've done some stories by them in the past. And uh, yeah, um, let's before we get too far ahead of ourselves, let's uh, do our recommendations. So I will partially recommend the story. I will also partially recommend the story. I will not partially recommend this story because I will not recommend. Okay. Uh, then I suppose we shall move on to the rundown of the story and we'll then find out why we did those recommendations. Mm -hmm. So uh, Nair is a foreign doctor working with a nonprofit organization in Nicaragua in the city of Esteli. Uh, One day he gets an old man from a community out in the mountains beyond the city who seems to be troubled, though he isn't really willing to open up about the problem. and. That seems to be that. He leaves. Um, Then a week later, one of the old man's friends comes to the clinic and asks Nair to go to the old man. And it's here that Nair learns that the old man has been having dreams of a creature stalking through the woods in the rain closer and closer to the old man's house, which is a farm up on the mountain where he cares for his crops during the winter seasons. Nair chalks it up to just dreams Perhaps the old man should seek some therapy, but otherwise returns to the clinic. And then a few days more go by until Nair discovers, thanks to the incompetence of a nurse, that the old man tried to contact them, screaming about a creature coming for him. Um, The message had been sent days ago. Whoops. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Nair rushes up to the mountain community and the old man's farm to discover signs that there had been some kind of a scuffle in the shack the old man had as a home. And it looked as though he had been dragged out brutally from his home by force. Um, You don't know his name's force. Fuck off. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, That's a really quick hostility. I'm I'm just, I'm done. I'm done with your shit today, gamer. (laughs) Okay. I'm sorry. It's fine. I'm really sorry. I'm not sorry. <laughs> I'm not sorry. <laughs> anyway. Um, Cheech and Chong reference. Thank you. Uh, as Nair investigates, a torrential downpour occurs while he's at the house, trapping him on the mountain. Uh, as Nair tries to wade out the rain, he spots the creature, a Bigfoot-like beast, watching him through the tree cover. Sorry, watching him through the tree cover before vanishing and impossibly traveling to the back of the shack, seeking another way into the building. Uh, Nair manages to keep the man beast out, and it seems to leave as the rain lessens. Uh, It's at this point that Nair flees with abandon down the mountain, hoping to never go near those mountains again. However, he is now having dreams of the creature who is tracking him to Esteli, and he fears as the next rain approaches and he he's writing this all down for someone to read themselves that he will be taken next like the old man. Finn. So, I suppose we shall move on to Everyone Tolerates the Grand Inquisitions! At this point, Uh, I've got a couple of them, so I'm going to start with this one here. The rain lasted longer than he had hoped, and he found himself sitting under his roof watching the sun sink behind the mountains. So I think it should be uh, 
the rain lasted longer than he had hoped. Mm -hmm. Also, is it really his roof? (laughs) I mean, like him sitting under his roof, watching the sun sink behind the mountains. It's technically the old man's roof. He's currently occupying that roof, though. Like, this is a very Nick philosophical Nick? question, really. It's like, who owns the house if no one, if the other, if the owner isn't there and somebody else is squatting in it mm-hmm. for a time? Well, the owner, technically, <laughs> technically, but like philosophically, what makes a man? Is it the power in his hand? Is it his quest for glory? Sorry, I don't know why. I just like I just came flooding out of my head. That's fine. Uh, anyway, I'll move on to the actual next. Grammar Inquisition. Mm-hmm. Um, the most disturbing thing in that room was the machete that I almost said machete. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Uh, I'm on a good roll today. Uh, in that room was the machete that was buried into wooden wall. So I think it should be into a wooden wall. Like, like not into wooden up. wall. <laughs> yeah, yeah, into wooden wall. <laughs> Uh man, I I'm I kind of miss the caveman speech of Baraska. I do. Yeah, <laughs> like, I do. yeah. Anyway, moving on. Uh, I killed time by toying with the machete. So, I kind of want this to have again in it. So, like, I killed time again by. Uh, I killed time again, or I again killed time by toying with the machete because earlier um he was killing time while uh just waiting out the rain and, it, and before he got the machete and he says the basically he says this exact same line basically like i killed time while waiting for the rain um uh, by looking around like that's that's what he said earlier and i was like it kind of felt a this might be a nitpick but it kind of felt a little repetitive reading it again like we're reading that like the first part of that line again because, yeah, he was waiting around. Yeah, it's not the exact yeah. same wording of killed time yeah. before, but yes, I I agree with you. Yeah, like just to, to add the again would would fix it, I think, for me. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, unless this. Well, unless he had to say it this time because he was literally destroying all the clocks with the machete. I mean, yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah he could be a time. <laughs> killer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then time cop has to come in and, and solve the mystery of the time killer. <laughs> Freaking time cop. Time. <laughs> and then we get time splitters show up for reasons. Why not? <laughs> Weren't they gonna do another time splitters? They were, yeah. Oh. And then I'm they like didn't. past tense. <laughs> yeah. It it's unfortunate. I think it's one of those vaporware sort of uh situations where it's just like it, it was in development hell for so long that it's no longer like the company no longer exists. Yeah. Or they've given up on the project. Like the new perfect dark game. Uh, really yeah. is it not basically oh. COVID happened and then their company got screwed through all that and yeah i don't think it's happening that's sad also not the story so we I should know. move on let's that move on from the sad sadness. For the rest of this now though oh so, so the next one here <laughs> yeah um uh, uh hey god i gotta look it up i'm so distraught <laughs> fine um I, I i wouldn't have any problem sleeping in the hammock but I prefer my bed to a hammock and my room took present preference over a cabin in which an old man was drug out by force. <laughs> get together, gamer. Get together, gamer. Get together, cultist. We'll be, we'll be fine. Come on. We can, yeah. <clears throat> All right. All right. So the, the issue here is drug. <laughs> Uh, the old man was drug out by force. I think it should. I'm pretty sure it should say dragged out by force. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. Because yeah, I like don't it. think drug is a past tense for drag. I'm pretty yeah. sure it's just for pharmaceuticals. <laughs> you are probably right. I I could look it up. <laughs> I was just about to say the same thing. Uh-huh. I have the power to look that up, but I will not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. Past tense for drag. Oh, hang on. Dragged or drug? Which is correct? Grammarly blog. Let's take a look at this Grammarly blog. (laughs) Doing this live on recording. Live. On El Dente. 
<laughs> According to the Grammarly.com blog, the recognized and correct pass per- correct. correct. <laughs> That's my the favorite rec- Gundam Warframe, the correct. It's a really good. Yeah. <laughs> Get correct. The recognized. Sorry. <laughs> the the recognized and correct past tense form of the verb drag is dragged. Drug mm-hmm. can still sometimes be heard, but only in certain dialects within the United States. So it's the way the character talks. Yeah, or writes in this in this tense too. Yeah, but you technically write the way you talk, so we're both true. Right. Yeah, yeah. I could take both of you to prom. <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, moving on. You're referencing, but okay. <laughs> it's it's like a common thing where like when there's like two people like arguing and stuff, and then like the middle person is like, I I'll take both of you to prom because it's like it's it's I think it's from like a from a, from an old movie or something. Anyway, it it doesn't matter. <laughs> We are really man. I'm surprised the ta- I can I can hear the tangent police sirens in the background, like in the distance. Yeah. Where would the tangent police sirens go? Be like, get on with it, get on with it, <laughs> <laughs> get on with it, get on. Yeah. Sounds like Mickey Mouse saying. So it, wait, it's just Mickey Mouse saying like, get on. <laughs> yeah, they're owned by oh, Disney. God. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Everything is owned by Disney. Like, don't you know this? <laughs> Yep, clearly. Uh, moving on. <laughs> Jogger. Um, I got out of the hammock for the fifth time to look out at the rain and see if my streak of bad luck would end anytime soon. Uh, so I think I- I'm like I reread that. I was like I didn't see it. I didn't actually hear anything wrong with that. Hang on. I got out of the hammock for the fifth time to look out at the rain and see if okay. So I th- I think what my my note here is um uh look out at the rain to see if my streak of bad luck would end anytime soon. However, rereading it, I think and is still valid there. Yeah. I th- I think you could probably go with either or. Like you could take it or leave it. Mhm. Just when you read it, you thought it was two, but when you say it out loud, yeah, it kind of works. Yeah, it does work mm-hmm. either way. I agree. Okay, and then my next one here. I thought that seeing it was bad enough, but when it was gone, I couldn't help, comma, but imagine breathing it. Uh, imagine it breathing down my neck. So I think the comma between help. And but doesn't need to be there because it breaks it up in an awkward way. <laughs> like it really does. Like it, it really just needs to be. I couldn't help but imagine it breathing down my neck. It doesn't need a comma there to stop you from like I couldn't help but imagine. <laughs> like but, but and it's like I couldn't help. And then it's like looking to the per, to the reader. But imagine it breathing down my neck. <laughs> like that's almost what it like sounds like, and that's wrong. Yeah, it's almost like he's saying, like, the reason I couldn't help was because he was paralyzed in fear because it was literally breathing down his neck. Yeah, but it's, I think it's supposed to be him imagining it breathing down his neck. So, like, yes, it should be like, I couldn't help but imagine that. <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. All right. And then the next one here. Um, I scanned the shadows in the downpour, but could find shadowy figure watching out. <laughs> Hang on. But could find shadowy figure watching me. I'm pretty sure it should be, but couldn't find the shadowy figure watching me. Yeah. Because, like, I was like, wait, what? <laughs> or could find no shadowy figure. Yeah, that would also work, too. Yeah. Or could not find the shadowy figure. Yeah. Or it could even be, but could find no shadowy figures watching me. Yes. Anything negatory, because that's what it's supposed to be. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> basically, yeah, yeah. He he. They they just missed the the negatory there. Mm-hmm. But uh, on to the next one. The sound of a stick breaking behind me alerted me to its position. I feel like there should be so this story like like this this sentence actually. Hang on, I'm gonna quickly pull it up from the to have the uh, sign here. Hang on. Um. Yeah. So it's like. Uh, so the, the 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 sentence before this was, I knew it was still nearby and it was very focused on me, 
but I couldn't pinpoint its exact location. Then the next sentence is the sound of a stick breaking behind me alerted me to its position. So I feel like, like when I was reading it, it kind of felt like that happened too fast or like there need, there need to be some kind of a, a segue word at the beginning of it to kind of like denote that like, like something suddenly happened. So that's why I'm suggesting putting suddenly at the beginning of, of the sound of, of a stick breaking behind me alerted me of its position. Like, Suddenly, the sound of a of a stick. Blah 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 blah. I was going to interject and say that it's supposed to be quick because it's moving superhumanly fast. However, you are yeah, yeah. right because starting yeah. with suddenly would emphasize that. Exactly. Yeah, th- th- that's what I mean. Like it is supposed to be quick, but like it read, it kind of felt. I don't know if this is like the proper way to say call this out, but it's like it kind of the the set the wording felt a little janky without some kind of like transition between the two sentences yeah um and then the last one i have um it wouldn't stop until it found me and did to the old man what it did to the viejo um i think it should read like this like um it wouldn't stop until it found me and did to, and did to me what it did to the to the viejo because viejo and old man are the same thing yeah, all like, of a sudden, I'm like, was there two attacks? Did that well, yeah, that's things? what. Yeah. yeah, so like, I was like, I think, I think this is just like a, a like a, a simple mistake or just a flub in like the writing. Like he just like they the person wrote too fast and accidentally added an extra bit. Mm-hmm. So I think it just needs to be cut down to like just like. Uh, it found found me, and did to me what it did to the viejo, or did to the old man. It doesn't even it can they they're interchangeable. Yes. Yep. Um. But that is the end of my grammar inquisition. So, Mikey, the E stands for evil. I shall hand you the torch and pitchfork. Uh, well, I'm going to continue where you just said, because... Uh... Hence why I'm passing you the torch and pitchfork. <laughs> take him. Hey, take him. Yep. Yep. Come on. <laughs> just uh... cram them through the internet. <laughs> just pull them out of your headset. Uh, when I read that sentence, I was so confused. I was like, it isn't... The old man, the viejo. the viejo, or is this a new character that we're just learning about? No. And I have, I have to reread the viejo as someone completely different. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was not happy with that. Mm-hmm. I wonder if it's meant to be like ellipsed out between the two, so it's like what it did to the old man. And then it's just like him like thinking about it again, like what it did to the old man, like thinking it again and again, like him traumatized. Yeah. Yeah, maybe, and it would add like a little bit to uh, the um, uh, the immersion of this story because it is. Ca- I give the story this much credit; it does have like kind of an immersion level by like being like a written letter, like the, this. Like it, again, I I always go back to Dagon, but like it kind of reminds me of Dagon, where like the character is writing what happened to them mm-hmm. as they are about to die, like so mm-hmm. that somebody might read what happened to them. Yeah, <laughs> but continue, Mikey. All right, uh, so my first grammar question here it is his friend left me with him to talk and find out what was happening. So I put a comma in there. So his friend left me with him to talk and find out what was happening. Okay, that seems a little short to me, to be honest. Like both sides are a little short, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. But that's me. <clears throat> that's you. That is. And my next one is also a comma issue. So, not knowing where it was now was more one hundred times worse. So I put a comma after now. So not knowing where it was now was one hundred times worse. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. I don't. I don't know if I agree again. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't both... hate. I don't. Yeah, like it's. I. I could. I could take it or leave it. Honestly, like that comma. Yeah, I think. I think I'm on. I'd be on gamer's side with that. It's like I could either like it doesn't need to be there, but it doesn't. It's not unwelcome. <laughs> yeah. Well, my my issue is just needing to break those wuzzes up a bit more. Mm, okay. So, maybe. 
Also, I hope I didn't like talk over you, gamer. <laughs> That's fine. Okay. And then I have the return of the Conjunction Junction. <gasps> All right. And insert Conjunction Junction bit here. Was in one of these cases during early May that I first met the old man. It was there that he became aware that he wasn't alone. It twitched spasmodically on the wet ground in death throes. It was something that was hunting in the forest. It was something brought about after a night of binge drinking or horror movies. It was, of course, from the old man. It went, I dreamt again last night. Oh, Christ, blood. I looked through that thing's eyes again. That creature is out there in the woods. I saw what it saw. Jesu Christo, I saw my cabin. It was so close. It's coming for me. It's hunting me. I don't know what to do. For God's sake, help me. It was common for people to leave their doors open in the campo. It took three pulls to remove it from the wall. It had bit deep, and whoever had swung it was definitely panicked about something. It was in the doorway that I found something that made me want to run, screaming into the night. It was one of the types specifically designed for cutting firewood, but The curved top had snapped, and it seemed more like a a foot-long knife. It only got worse. It didn't move, but it didn't mix in with the uniformity of the trees. It was tall. It had to have been eight feet tall. Its arm sank down to its knees, and it was completely covered in matted hair. Its teeth were bared in something that looked to be between a grimace of pain and the knife slice smile of a sadistic man. It was behind the house now. It had stood stone still for minutes. And then, in the blink of an eye, it was behind the house. It was searching for other entrances. It was circling around to the front. It was not the sturdiest of barricades. It grabbed a tree, and I saw its hairy fingers wrap completely around the tree trunk. It scaled the tree with ease. It crested the tree and looked out over its domain. It was heading towards me. It was stalking him in his dreams. It was now stalking me. It would find me eventually. It only moved in the rain. It wouldn't stop until it found me and did to the old man what it did to the Vieto. It's because I know that the next rain, it will draw closer and closer to me. And today, it looks like the heaviest rain yet. Finn. Wow. (laughs) That was surprisingly comprehensive of, like, the story's rundown. (laughs) Um... Also, I gotta say, so like, I'm kind of conflicted with the it's because a lot of the time in the, the you, way you were saying, they were referring, the it was being referred to as like the creature. Mm-hmm. 
not all the time and like those ones should be fixed or like it should be like kind of corrected but like it seemed like it's like the same kind of situation of like like he went to do something or she went to do something it was like and because it is also a pronoun so it's like it went to do this thing Mm -hmm. so it's sort of like i'm kind of on the fence of like as if not those are acceptable for an it story because they are technically um at like they're they're technically adequate (laughs) That's using it for... to describe this thing that he doesn't know what it is yet. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, but he could have said the creature or the the shadow monster, yeah. the hairy. Thing. He could have used that a little bit more. Yeah, he could have used like the creature or like the beast or something a little bit more in mm-hmm. in the back in the. But like, no, you don't. You wouldn't have to like do it all the time. Because mm-hmm. otherwise, you get into the problems like C spot run, C spot get the ball, like that kind of thing. Like you would just keep repeating the same like name. You have to keep using either a different word, and then that might get confusing, or if you use the same kind of like terminology or term for the creature, like the creature or the beast, it again, you like see the beast, see the beast suddenly become uh, go behind the, behind the building <laughs> in a blink of an eye. Also, I let, I love that. Like the way you read it, like the, it's like, it was suddenly behind the house. I was like, shit, that was fast. But also it, it was uh very, uh, very, um, uh, like, you 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 didn't it didn't fuck you didn't fuck around even with your it story of like yeah no there, there was a couple other sentences in there that explain how we got like how how impossibly it moved around the house but you're just like no getting back to brass tacks with the it story on that mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like also another way to get around the it's you can still use the it's to describe the creature just don't start the sentence with it like instead of, yeah instead true. of saying it was suddenly behind the house you say suddenly it was behind the house. Yeah, use those kind of terms. Yeah. Also, okay, fair enough. With the lack of context, the entire start of that sounded a little different to the actual story we got because it sounded like the old man got drunk. Things happened. He got pregnant somehow, and then <laughs> he killed the abomination that he birthed, but it wouldn't die, and it's now stalking him. As it oh said, like, God! That in the forest in its death throes, it. Came, it belonged to him or it came from him or something like that was one of the next lines gamer i think you literally <laughs> just described the the basic plot of, a, of an 80s horror movie i did i really did isn't it called it bleeds uh or uh, it lives hang on i'm gonna i'm gonna quickly look this up because like I th- i'm pretty sure that's a movie I'm like sure about like is. a baby about a baby that like an abominated uh, like an abominable baby like that kills people oh uh, what the hell was it called i think it's called it lives film hang on let's yeah, yeah, it's. I think it's called "It Lives," and it's about like a or "It Lives Again" is what it was called. It was a 1978 horror movie. Um. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, but you basically describe like there's a couple of like move horror movies from like the 70s and 80s that are kind of like that, where it's like a uh, an abomination thing. Also, I remember here. This is sort of out off topic, but I remember hearing from like Adam Scott Glancy, the one of the guys who wrote like for Delta Green. He was at a like some kind of like uh like some kind of weird museum that had like old records and stuff like that of like a local like a farmer like a like a a, a county doctor from like the turn of the century or like the the like early nine like early to that like early uh like nineteen nineteen hundreds and he remembers looking at one of the records and it was like born da 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 died that like literally like six minutes later yeah and then cause of death abomination <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> and, and he remembers all and, and that stuck with him like as he tells these the story like over and over again because it's like like uh, maybe it was like it, uh, clearly it was like maybe like the the, the baby like died six like because like it, it was malformed and stuff like that so like that's and that's what that was the term they used back then was abomination but like he just kept thinking about like this doctor having to put down this monstrosity that come, came out of some woman yeah <laughs> like in, in the 19, in, in the 1900s hmm? yeah or in this case yes in this case yeah. it would have been a man yes thanks for tying it back to the story yeah. <laughs> the tangent but yeah don't attack me <laughs> yeah yeah now they're just after me and it's like <laughs> yeah but um uh, yeah and and the reason we we do these or the reason why mikey does this gamer Oh yeah, he he does this to highlight all the sentences in the story that start with its ands or buts because there's always better words to use. Mm-hmm. And sometimes there's also like really funny little like things that you do when you do it out of context. Mm-hmm. Which is how 
this all became a thing in the first place because it came out yep. with full force. It was a squirrel. <laughs> yep. That's how we got the it's that was that was the the, the beginning of the it stories yes. for us. So for any of you who are listening who are like, why do they do this? <laughs> Because you haven't listened back to any of our older or older stuff. <laughs> That's true. We like never reference the origin of it. It's like when we talk about yeah. the SNTF. We assume everyone knows what the hell we're talking about. <laughs> yeah, and I'm sure we have fans that do. But like, you gotta sometimes think it's like this might be the first episode that somebody listens to. Oh, of course. <laughs> or like, yeah. if like if we created the SNTF, which is a supernatural task force, and then we just call it SNTF from that day forward. And if someone misses that one episode, they'll be like, what the hell is this? <laughs> <laughs> what the hell is the SNTS? Yes. <gasps> yeah. So we do have to Fair remember to give context. We don't want our own jokes and stuff to become its stories themselves, basically. Exactly. Of yeah. But uh, I suppose we'll move on to the grammar in yellow. Yes. I played yeah. the message for her and she blanched. Yeah. What is blanching? Like she scalded like, vegetables bleh. in boiled water or steamed them for a short time because that's what blanching is. No, I've I I've heard the term like when you're like like oh oh shit oh fuck. like because like it's all like I got was cooking. Vegetables all right, hang on. Blanched. <laughs> <laughs> I assumed it was some sort of gag reflex based on context. Yeah. But... Yeah. To yeah, blanched uh, an idiom. <laughs> it, it, it is to bulk. Or hesitate when faced with something unpleasant. How are you this, this phrase can also. Uh, I literally Googled blanched slang. I didn't have any slang. Uh, the phrase comes. Uh, the, this phrase can also include or describe one's visible paleness as to blanch. Something means to whiten it. Uh, all, uh, all of my friends ran into the creepy haunted house, but I blanched at the sight of it. So. Okay. Well, now I know. And if I do a Google mm-hmm. search and nothing shows up, put slang in and see if that works. Yeah. I learned a thing. You did. Mm. Okay, so this next one. During the winter, some mm-hmm. farmers live up in the mountains so they can be close to their crops and protect them. The old man had a shack up in, up in the mountains. To me, this is kind of like repeating itself. Yeah. So it'd be it would flow kind of better if it was during the winter, some farmers live up in the mountains so they can be close to their crops and protect them. The old man was no different. Like saying he has that too but you don't need to actually say the same words yeah that's true because like generally if you have a farm up in the mountains it assume you you can't assume safely without make sounding like an ass to me and you Mm. (laughs) that there's going to be some kind of domicile at that farm (laughs) yeah you would think so yes and that goes in nicely to my next one she believed my story and told me that he had gone up to his house in the mountains to be closer to his p- crops so he could protect them from the deer and less scru- scrupulous farmers who would steal his beans and corn. She told me that the, the viejo went up into the mountains at the start of the winter and wouldn't come down until the harvest. So again, it's repeating yeah. itself again after it already repeated <laughs> itself again. It, every mm-hmm. time it brings up mountains, it seems to keep doubling down on mountains every time. <laughs> Yeah, the way to shorten down that entire basically paragraph that I read just to say that he's up in the mountains, uh, you shorten it down to she believed my story and told me that he had gone up to his house in the mountains and the viejo wouldn't come down until harvest. Yeah, that, that's the long Bam. short of it. He's up there and he's not coming down until harvest. Yeah. Yeah, for somebody who's apparently like knows that their time is running that is running out, they're very like they they're like just adding extra like work for them. Yeah. <laughs> to get this to get this message out or get the story written before oh, yeah, they true. they bite it. And mm-hmm. think about it in that aspect. Could be because he's flustered though. Yeah, it could also be that, yeah. But if we say that, then any grammar related thing is like, oh well, it, I know he's actually I know. flustered, so yeah. Actually, mm-hmm. You don't need to become actual Lee here. Yeah. Okay, then this next one. So he arrives at the cabin, calling over the old man. I stood in the doorway, and it was there that I knew that my gut instinct had been right. The words, oi veo, uh, died on my lips as I looked over the ravaged room. Mm-hmm. So the way that this flowed, because it's quoted, yeah. it made me think that he was saying something else, but he's literally just saying, hey, old man. Yeah. Which is what he was saying before. So why quote it again? 
Like, why specifically um, quote it if it was already alluded to that he was saying, hey, old man, before? I think because, like, when he said, hey, old man, before, he was, like, away from the shack. And then as he gets in, it's like, hey, old man. And then just looked around the 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 the, the mess. I get that. Yeah. What I don't get is why, why bother quoting it here after he's already been saying it? Like, the... The way that I would write it personally, not that I'm a writer, so I have any idea what the hell I'm doing, but I would just say my words died on my lips as I looked over the writer's room because the words were already him just calling out to the old man. It being specifically quoted doesn't do anything. Fair. Yeah. No, I, I get you. And like, I, you're, you're honestly like, I, I could, I could, again, take it or leave your, your version versus this one. Cause I think the way it's trying to go is like, he, like, when he got to the house, when he was like outside of the house, away from the door, he called out and didn't find anything. Then he got closer to the door. And as he opened the door, he went to say that. And again, and that's when it died on his lips because he started seeing all the debris and stuff. So I, I know that, but I, I could, being, yeah, you're, you're being mountains right now. You're repeating. Some no! <laughs> God damn it. All right, so like, sorry, I, yeah. I get why like it's dying on the lips. That's not what I'm confused about or bringing up. It's the fact that it's said just blanketly before that he called it to the old man, and now it's specifically quoting the exact words he's saying, even though it's the same words. It would make more sense okay. if before it was saying, like, <laughs> I called out to the old man, and then in quotes, oi vejo, oi vejo, I'm probably saying it wrong, whatever. And then when he gets there to the cabin, and he looks in the room, have it so, like, you're saying it, but, like, um, have it lip seed out to show that he's, like, struggling to say it with all the weird shit that's going on? That would make yeah, more sense. Yeah, okay. Yeah, no, I... I yeah, fair enough. I get you now. Okay. And that is the end of my grammar in yellow. Okay. Then I suppose we'll move on to actual thoughts. I suppose we will. So I'm going to start with um, the pictures, the images mm -hmm. at the bottom of the, of the story. First off, I'm glad the images are at the bottom of the page, even though they really don't do too much to like spoil anything. They don't spoil anything. Uh, at all. In fact, the only the thing that does spoil it is oddly enough the uh, the narrated video links that are at the top of the story. Because <laughs> one of them straight up shows like well one of them shows a storm, but then one of them has like a, a title card that look literally has like a bigfoot like monster on it. <laughs> Dude, the old man could just be swole. That's fair. Yeah, he's up there. Oh, viejo. Time. Yeah. <laughs> oh my viejo. <laughs> Um, but also like I, I do like the image I do like the photos that we get, although I'm kind of confused why they why there's like I, I get like it's cool like there there are three separate photos of a village in Nicaragua during a torrential rainstorm and it's showing like the like torrential rain and what is that? So it says uh Ya Viena la Luvia. It's what like oh that? I don't it's like oh here comes the rain or something. I it looked at okay it. and then it's like oh here comes the rain is the first image and then it's just with a period at the at the end then the next one is oh here comes the rain in uh with an exclamation point and then the last one is more rain and it's like oh here comes the rain exclamation point exclamation point exclamation point <laughs> the rain <laughs> which is i get is what it's saying yeah and it the story does end with like and today it looks like the heaviest rain yet so this man has taken pictures to add to his uh, his his letter that he's writing uh i suppose <laughs> um yeah i mean they're they're kind of unnecessary but at the same time like they are again i i'm very wi wishy washy's back <laughs> yeah cuz like you. i cuz i don't mind it but like i don't think they're necessary at the same time I don't think they do anything for the story personally. Yeah. Like, I, I think it's interesting because I, actually I just looked up Imperial Invective and yeah, we've done, uh, he, he's the one behind um, uh, the Fleshgate story that me and Mikey did a while back. Okay. Um, I don't think you were in that one gamer. Um, I don't know, but he's also done some other, oh, and he also did if it, uh, it bleeds, it, uh, it, it, the, uh, the, the buddy horror one that we did, it breathes, it bleeds, it breeds was the other story that we we've, we've read and done, uh, of Imperial Invective and, um, actually looking at his, like, uh, his, uh, little like author page, uh, he, it does look like he is actually like, it, he's done some work, uh, down in like Nicaragua. Yeah. So it like this the story is actually it sounds uh, at least from from what I'm gathering is maybe it's like he he was actually had some experience while he was down there maybe again obviously not fighting monsters although maybe <laughs> but um 
but at least like it's sort of like that right way you know so like while he was down there he got some inspiration to write these stories these might be his actual pictures from being down there i think i think that's what they are honestly yeah. is they, it's very likely that those are like that's he's probably he probably saw the rain like how much a deluge of like rain that comes down during some of these uh like the rainy season and then he uh, it it looks like this is under uh in in his story categories it looks like it's under nicaraguan myths and stories so there's like a couple of stories he's written based on like nicaraguan myths and and legends so this creature is actually is probably like a creature of myth down there um and so he just decided and he decided to make a hor uh, like a creepy pasta based off of like both his experience being down there and also based on a uh, a story that he heard down there so that's pretty cool mm-hmm. um but unfortunately I don't, like they're cool they're cool photos and it does kind of help like when you get to the end it, like it does kind of like help you visualize like what the location looks like but it's also not net really necessary for the story itself also, like you, you can take it or leave it isn't where the monster is ever because it's no the cabins, but it's in the woods no true but like that i think that that picture there is like maybe that's like outside the guy's apartment in Esteli. yeah so and because it's at the end of the story and it after like after it says like oh and it's it's starting to rain like it's heaviest now like that could infer that like he's taken some photos out of, of his like outside his window or outside his door mm-hmm. at the street as it's like raining like cats and dogs so but uh yeah i just thought i'd bring up the the photos and stuff like that um mainly because i actually realized i didn't have anything on them until i we started like going through this again <laughs> mm-hmm. but uh i'll move on to the next thing uh the dream culminated a few days ago when he came across a chancho slash pig in his nightly foray. So I like, so this is, this happens a couple of times in the story where the author adds in the, the Spanish word for, or the local, the local word for something, and then gives us a slash followed by a trans, the English translation of what that is. And I I really kind of like that because like we get it like uh, bruja slash witch, uh, a couple of like is one of them. And then there's some other ones. Uh, and it's like a little bit of like education to the locale with my spooks. <laughs> um, some location now, education. Exactly. Yeah. Location education. Yeah. One of them may have been in brackets. Yeah, I think so. The bracketed one that's like, it's when it's describing, um, where's the freaking word? It's describing what it means, but not the word. Oh, I, it's at the very, yeah. Uh, the he lived, yeah. Uh, yeah, he lived. Uh, uh, he lived a few miles outside of the city in a rural community. Hence, the slightly derogatory title uh, of oh, that uh, camp- campesino, right uh, a that. term similar to hillbilly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. But that's also because, uh, and then oh, because it's a sorry. longer thing. That's why it's bracketed yeah. out instead of just a slash. Yeah, uh, and then like the next sentence after that is like his daughter literally had to drag him to into the clinic by the hand because of his pina slash guilt of seeking help. So, yeah, uh, I, I, I like how it's used in this story. Like, again, we're getting some location education about, like, the local terminology and the local slang and stuff. Now, there are some times in the story that words are used that we don't get um, uh, a, trans- a direct translation to, like viejo yep. or, um, uh, or gringo and stuff of like that. However... If you've watched any... I- Freaking, uh, exactly. <laughs> any westerns any spaghetti western which you hello good gringo yeah <laughs> yeah yeah you're you are able like through through either like cult like pop culture or of like watching like things that are set in like the southwest of america like with in, in, or in latino locations and stuff uh or if you know have even you have like even like i i have no education in spanish but i was able to kind of suss out some of the words like campo and stuff like that um or even just doing a quick google search or google check um however it is kind of weird that like half this half the half the words in the story do get a a, a translation in the story and then like the rest of them are just kind of like it just sort of like oh he just starts named he just starts using like terms from the area maybe he assumed uh-huh. that there are words that are more widely known and we're just yeah. dumb <laughs> <Fair>. <laughs> Well, again, like uh, gring, like gringo, one hundred percent, because yeah, that's just a non speak. Like it's basically a foreigner, like uh, like a non a non Spanish or non Latino person. Yes, but I it's think a, that's the only a, one yeah. that technically doesn't really need a uh, 
a translation because of how widely it's used through Hollywood. Everything else, though? Yeah. Uh, Viejo, I think also because like it does kind of like he he references the old man and then says the Viejo. So you can kind of like, yes, yeah, it's it sort of it, it, Viejo is just another term for old man. Yeah. Well, uh, since we're talking about it, mm-hmm. my issue is with this is that they should have been consistent. Uh, even if. Uh, like. They assume people know what a gringo is or a viejo or whatever. Yeah. The, the reason being that when I came across an English word that I hadn't heard before, I thought it was <laughs> Spanish. <laughs> I think I know which one you're talking about too. Is it? it, it hang on, just for the, is it? Uh, is it from this quote? Uh, whatever was had or no, whatever it was had killed the pig in a single blow with a heavy pursuit fist yes yes okay that is the coin as well <laughs> yeah yeah i that that's literally my next comment <laughs> so, is because i learned a new word today too because i definitely had to google that one is like what the hell is her yeah. suit <laughs> yeah and and that's the thing because you have spanish mixed in it, like i first thought oh it's another spanish word i have to look up yeah. But then I find out it's English, and I'm like, oh, oh, what the heck? <laughs> that's not, technically, that's not on the story or Spanish. That's on English being a Frankenstein's monster of a language that just pulls from different na- things. Yeah. So, yeah. like, there are, like, English is just, like, this weird, like, shagoth of a language. Yeah. So. But the, the thing is, if for every Spanish word he had the yeah. slash, the English version. Yeah. Then at a glance, I would know, okay, that's not Spanish. Yeah. Yeah, but regardless, when you first uh, Googled it, did you not just type in her suit first, or did you go to a type it into a translator first? Uh, I think I tried to translate, but I had to do a uh, well, because it, was, <laughs> it wasn't Spanish, so yeah. it didn't do anything. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I had to do the Google search. Mm-hmm. So. Um, I already had the yeah. Spanish to English translator open. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Also, I just quickly took to, uh, looked up Campo because I was like, I thought I knew what it was, but it's actually slightly different than what I, I suspected it was. So in South America, especially Brazil, uh, a Campo is a grass plain with occasional stunted trees. So I spent months visiting a rural community in the Campo. So... But that one, I think, like maybe you should have gotten like a like a uh, an in brackets dis- uh, definition. Yeah, similar to the. I'm um, agreeing with what Mikey's saying that all the Spanish yeah. should have a an English translation next to it, regardless of whether or not you think people understand. At least the not. first time, yeah. At least the first time you see it in the story, not, not doing like viejo dash old man like every yeah. time. I think it should like be the first time you, we hear viejo. It should say old man. Yes, of course. Yeah. Because then it's still fresh in your mind, like, oh, well, that's what that is, and you're still yeah. reading, so you will you can determine what it is. Yeah. If if you can't, then you go back and be like, oh, right, that's what that meant. Yeah. And and this <laughs> is especially since the author has decided to do this for other, sto- for other words in the story. <laughs> mm-hmm. so it's like, you might as well keep doing it for the rest of the story. You do all of them or you do none of them. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Wait, Gamer, isn't this, so wait, do you follow the pattern as well? You know, like Zane, uh, uh, like Wattsworth Zane from uh, from Brood Hollow, always. where he, uh, it's always, it's either the doors are either open or they're fully closed. They're never in between. It's also how the internet <laughs> works. The internet works in That's binary. Yeah. Either everyone loves it or everyone hates it. Yeah, you, Mister Wishy Washy, you, are... you don't belong here. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I'll uh, adios, amigos. Yeah. I'll need a translation for that. Uh huh. <laughs> Fuck you. That's what the translation is. Eh? Well, fuck you then. So, oh wait, this is my t- wait. Yeah, this is yeah. my actual thought. <laughs> also, you didn't say what her suit fist actually means. It means well, I, I was gonna. I'm, yeah, I'm gonna get to that. Yeah. So, so her suit. Yeah. So, uh, it's like a heavy. Uh, yeah. So he punches the the pig's head with like a he- with a heavy her suit fist. So her suit is an adjective. Uh, it has two meanings. One, hairy. Two, covered with coarse, stiff hairs. So hairy. Yes. <laughs> the way that I read it, 
is it said um said adjective but also comical so i think it means it's like comically hairy like maybe a yeah a whole lot of hair not just a little bit of hair it's very very hairy yeah and as as we find out the creature is like this like it, it's covered in matted hair yes. so yeah uh and then my my next thing here um i could tell he was disappointed that i didn't believe him but i had thought who could be, or, but, but i had thought who could believe a story like that you have to be insane to take dreams for reality. Right now, I can tell you, or right now, I can tell that you don't believe me. I'm not angry. Seriously, I'm not. I hope that by the end, you will understand that what I am telling you is true. I hope to God that I will not share the fate of the old man, but I now think otherwise. So, Here's a question I have for you. I'm not, I wasn't sure if this was, should go under grammar acquisition or a final thought. Mm-hmm. Should the meta commentary that the story that the writer is is adding into his his recounting have been separated on its own, like it like uh, like to kind of like separate it from the actual like story that he's telling? Like because we get this part where it's like um, I couldn't tell like uh, or uh, I. Uh, I couldn't tell if he was like, I could tell that he was disappointed, blah, blah, blah. And then it like, uh, you have to be insane to take dreams for reality. And then it, that's where the actual like recounting of the, of his, of his, de- his story stops. And it switches over to a, a commentary that he is telling the reader, but reading it, it kind of just goes right into the net, into that. It doesn't like have any kind of separation whatsoever. And I feel like it should have been like, like, and like space down. And then maybe even like a, a horizontal line to kind of like break it up. If he was writing a paperback novel that he's going to be putting out to a publisher, yeah, but yeah. he's not. I know. I know. Technically, but, uh, it's... the most in lore formatting he could have done with this is just a giant block of text, no formatting, rough use of punctuation, spelling errors throughout the entire thing. Um, that would be the most yeah. accurate. Yeah, and honestly, like. I'm with you on that too, because like again, I'm wishy washy today. I I have become wishy washy, <laughs> <laughs> uh, which is funny because the story's called Downpour. It has to do with like water and stuff like that. So, uh-huh. um, but I don't hate I don't hate the how it's done because, like you said, gamer, it does help to enrich the immersion of the story because he wouldn't be like thinking about like how to for- properly format his sentences as he's waiting to die. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um. It's just like as a as a writer, like as somebody who like likes who who reads these kind of stories, it's like I could have I could have used that to be lugged down the space. Yeah. That being said, it's like, I die. I'm, it's like it's like I wait to die. Stop. Fuck off. <laughs> it's like well, actually, I mean, you know, your your grammar is all off here. <laughs> like that's important right now. Oh God, he's here. <laughs> ah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I'll say this: if the entire thing was written in a manner that's like okay this dude is furiously writing this down he does not give a shit he being yeah. the in in character character of nair in lore mm-hmm. character of nair if that's the case fine but the rest of the story is formatted correctly like it was an actual novel kind of deal so this yeah that is the one outlier so the nail that sticks out gets hammered down you know it should yeah. be like the rest yeah for sure so wait, are you saying you, you agree with me, but you don't agree with me? No, I'm saying I agree it should be technically separated from everything else because the rest of the story is... It's the only one But you one. just said earlier that, like, you you just countered me earlier, and now you're saying, but, like, now I actually do agree with you. It's like, uh, what? <laughs> okay. I'm Yes. I, I get what you're Yeah. I'm just laughing at the situation here. I'm trying to get a word in. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I apologize. Um, well, it's because, like, as we're talking about it, like, technically, yes, he is freaking out and trying to write down information, but the rest of the story doesn't give that feeling. The only yeah. one spot is right there where it's jarring to understand which side of the lore of the story that's being told on. 
So if the entire yeah. story was like that with him constantly interjecting, then it's fine. But it's the only one, so it shouldn't be there. So it True. should be tabbed down on a new paragraph, even if it's a short paragraph, just talking to him about him talking out of story about it, and then tab back into it or something. Yeah, because it's kind of got this like formal formatting of like he's writing this memoir, or th- this uh, this kind of letter to whoever will read it when he passes. Again, similar to Dagon to H.P. Lovecraft's Dagon, mm-hmm. where like the guy is like writing in his room, and then by the end of the story, he can hear the the, the bashing at his door, um, and he prepares to j- leap out the window. Yes. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, but for the most of the rest of the story, like the rest of the the writing that he did, it was rather like formal as he recounted the um, the events that have led up to his demise. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if that's the case, and uh, as he's writing this down, taking his time, he's starting to get glimpses of it, mention it, and then mm-hmm. when he mentions yep. that, he's like, "Oh shit, I saw it outside!" And then all of a sudden, there's more typos, there's less punctuation, and he doesn't care about going to the next paragraph because he's in a rush to get this information down before it kills him. Now, I did notice like while I was reading the story, I did notice that there were fewer punctuation errors and grammar issues at the start of the story than there were at the begin at the end of the story. Like I noticed most of my Yeah, and and most of that is chalked up to just like the writer. Like I I do it all the time too as a writer, like or as uh, like somebody who writes stories is like I end up kind of like I, I I see the finish line and I just try to like push ahead without like any with with abandon. <laughs> well, so. Also because the start of the story is all set up and it's all chill, but when you get to the quote unquote mm-hmm. action of the story, whether or not there is action or not, but the the action section of the story where shit's going down, everything's going quicker. So everything's going quicker in your head as well as the writer yeah. trying to write it down. So there's more chance of you slipping up. Yeah, and and again, it, it works. It, it could work in the favor of what we're saying. We're like the immersion level. Like he he started off like rather like formal and like watching what he was writing, and then like as he kept going, he started like getting more ang- anxiety or more anxious to get his story finished. Yes, and so you could kind of use that as a cover for like the actual writer getting anxious and wanting to finish the story like up mm-hmm. and like not worrying too much about editorial stuff until like later. That'd be a fun <laughs> and thing then, to do yeah. as well. Like if you're actually mm-hmm. wanting to do that as the character, because this character is typing this uh, typing this out somewhere. I'm assuming he's typing it. He might be writing it by hand. But if he's typing I, it... I feel like it's typing, yeah. If he's typing it, when you type in, like, oh, God, I see it, all at that point forward, start literally typing faster and don't hit backspace. You know, let all the natural Just... um, typos that you do trying to type in a faster manner actually come through in the story. Yeah, I mean, assholes like us will 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 criticize it. Oh hell no! If I saw that happen, I would come to that same conclusion. He's freaking out now. Okay, uh, I'll I'll note that for next time. I f- if we ever find one like that, yeah, fine. <laughs> Review cultists will remember this. <laughs> I'm always I'm always one that enjoys immersion, and that yes. is a very that's high high points for immersion. Fair, yeah. All right, moving on to the the next thing I have. Um, I called the nur- uh, I called in the nurse to ask when the call was made. She informed me that it was only a few days ago. I played the message for her, and she blanched. She realized the urgency of the message. Yeah, that nurse should definitely be reprimanded or fired <laughs> for that. Also, like when you read that again, saying she blanched. Blanche is also the name yeah. of someone, so I thought it was like a different type of like Karen sort of thing. Like <laughs> instead of being Dave a Karen, or... she's being a Blanche. Like that's a Blanche thing. To yeah. Do. <laughs> gamer, gamer. I think this is a case of Buffalo, Buffalo, Buffalo. Yeah, probably. But please continue. <laughs> okay. But yeah, no, that's that's all I had to say about this. It was just like my my one comment is like, yeah, I think this nurse should definitely be reprimanded for uh, not not putting some urgency on a call. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, as soon as I read that, what I wrote down for my note is, what do you mean it's a few days old? Who are these people? The cable company? I'll get back to you at their earliest convenience, also known as a few days. And then then he'll come, the doctor will come by your house and check on you between the hours of 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. 
Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's ridiculous. Like either no one in this hospital cares because no one bring the, brings this up that this is a problem, by the way, that she waited three days. It's normal. Um, yeah. Or the nurse needs to be fired for letting a message to a clinic sit for three days. Yeah. Now, it does kind of state earlier in the story that um, uh, uh, some of these, a lot of these doctors would push like things that they didn't care for on this new guy uh, on Nair. So, like, maybe it is sort of like a, a situation of like they're just, they've, uh, like, it's just that one of those kind of hospitals or one of those kind of clinics where they're just like, whatever. Like, they, there's some, some, uh, some dirtiness to it. Yeah. But also, Nair's job is to deal with, with the ones that they don't care about. So if a call comes in and they hear it and it's like, ah, oh, I don't want to deal with this guy. Send it to Nair. Then you would send it to Nair immediately. There's at the end of the day, there's still fair, a hospital yeah. or a clinic or whatever they are. They're yeah. still trying to help people. It's not like they don't care unless they actually don't care. Which be the yeah, case. We, we don't know. <laughs> yeah. Cause it seems like, yeah, it strip says at one point, um, like there's no doctor patient confidentiality or anything like that in here. Yeah, yeah, like gossip, like gossip always happens. Yeah. Like gossip reigns supreme. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So that we there is some. There, this clinic is definitely not like a, a super like high end hospital. It's more just like kind of a uh, like a, a base, like kind of just like a. There's some dirt in the clinic. Yeah, going on. It's not clean. <laughs> so, on to the next thing I have. Uh, a peal of lightning confirmed my worst fear. I caught only a glimpse of it. But a glimpse was all I needed to let out a scream. It was tall. It had to have been eight feet tall. Its arms sank down to its knees, and it was completely covered in matted hair. Its teeth were bare in something that looked to be between a grimace of pain and a knife-sliced smile of a sadistic man. The brief flash of light died, but that image will be burned into my memory until the day of my death. Coincidentally, I may not have to wait long until then. And so like, once I got this, this description of the monster, I was like, cool. South American psychic Bigfoot. (laughs) Like, I just, that's, that's immediately what came to mind is just like, like a a man beast, Uh, like the Sasquatch or the skunk ape or what have you. And there was a pig earlier. So is it a man beast pig? No. Gamer. Are you sure? Yes. Are you serial? No. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Uh, also, it brought it's brought up here, and there's little hints like here and there in the story. But I'm guessing that uh, so uh, this is what I, like what I was writing when I was like reading this part of the story. It's like I'm guessing that Nair is now having dreams that this monster is stalking them as well. And by the end of the story, I can conf- uh, I confirm that. Yeah, it, it's all but confirmed. So. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's a little. It's one of those like things where like the story kind of um. Uh, it, it, it's I, I suppose this could be a negative for the story. Is like you kind of see it coming a mile away, like uh-huh. in the writing. So, um, yeah. but regardless, mo- moving on to the next thing I have here. Um, so this is so another stick snapped a few feet to the left of the last noise and i knew that it was moving so this is like when the creature is like stalking behind the shack and he can hear the snapping the sticks hang on a minute i I gotta i gotta stop this story completely at the rails right now it is raining on a tin roofed house (laughs) that's a downpour too yeah how is nair hearing twigs snapping behind a wall outside my experience closed too even if there are windows there probably aren't (laughs) No, it's probably like, yeah, it's probably like, like, there's definitely probably some like gaps or something like that. Um, Like not enough for the creature to get in, but like, there's definitely, it's not like insulated, I would imagine. It's a dirt floor shack. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So like, from my experience in a, in a house that's, that's sealed and like insulated and stuff like that, we, I have uh, a, a, I've been in one of those in a house that has like a tin roof. And when it rains, there is no stopping the pitter patter of that sound and it blocks out every other noise that sound so is also a talking point that nair brought up earlier so that is existent yep and even if it is like that kind of a, a shack that doesn't have insulation and yes you would hear through it better with no insulation regardless 
the loud sound of the roof and just the rain outside hitting the ground and everything would be louder than all that. Yeah. So I, I call shenanigans. Yeah. Uh, I didn't even think like of that. Nair, Nair should not, uh, Nair, it, it should be written in here somewhere that Nair happens to have superhuman hearing. <laughs> <laughs> or just change it instead of a, a twig snapping. It circles around, right? He just, it's gone, and then all of a sudden, he hears a bang at the back wall. Yeah, like he maybe he's trying to dash like, through. Yeah, or even like the gro like he can hear the groaning of the wall, like as it's like kind of leaning into the wall as it's moving, or as it's shoving by, right? Because mm-hmm. who knows? Maybe the uh, the the shack at the back of the shack is near the tree line, so it's kind of like squeezing between trees and the shack's wall to kind of move through it, but. Uh, it's not said, and yeah, so like, yeah, that that that's definitely some, a plot hole there <laughs> with the the noise. Um, and then my next one here, um, something I really liked about the monster is this quote here: uh, "The creature gave a low, inhuman grab." <laughs> Sorry, when you said it like that, I imagined you were about to go into a quote that the monster said that you really enjoyed. God damn it! <laughs> Sorry, please continue. <laughs> yeah. The creature gave a low inhuman groan. <laughs> he did kind of. <laughs> That's why I was laughing. Uh, and began to walk away. It couldn't figure out why, or I, I couldn't figure out why until I recalled the old man's words. He said that he only dreamt of the creature when it was raining. He only saw it in the first rain. The creature had some connection to the rain. Did it only hunt in the rain? So maybe my my speculation on this creature's abilities is that it can move super fast or even teleport through rain. And I'd love that to be true as someone who has literally given that ability to a supernatural monster in in tabletop games before. Have you? Yeah. Um, I don't think you were there for that, uh, but uh, it was for our Grumblewitz 1920s games. Uh, for, uh, over on uh, One Less Die, our sister podcast. <laughs> um, there's a creature that like travels through water, and it starts raining, and like the creature like is able to just like basically bamf through the rain. Nice. Um, a little off topic as well, um, since we're already on that road. <laughs> um, but I feel like this would be a good explanation for slashers seemingly teleporting trope, like Jason Voorhees could move through rain, rain like even faster than nor- than a normal human being since he already has kind of that near drowned origin to him. Like he was, so he has like some kind of connection to water as a result of his origin of like nearly drowning because the camp counselors were fucking uh, and not watching him. <laughs> was it nearly or did he straight up drown? Well, okay. So in the first movie, spoilers for a movie from the, from 1979, <laughs> um, Jason Voorhees. Uh, so it's, it's said in the first movie that Jason, was just the kid who drowned and his mother went nuts and seeked vengeance on anybody who's tried to start up uh, uh, Camp Crystal Lake. So, like, Mama Voorhees was the killer in the first movie. However, in the second movie, it is established that Jason did not die from drowning. He actually survived it and then just went feral and, like, and, and like survived out in the woods around the camp. And then also saw his mom get beheaded from, at the end of the first movie and so that's when he became the slasher. So he's not a supernatural horror creature? He is only a supernatural monster in like Friday the 13th part 5 or 4 where uh Jason it's called Jason Lives and it's when he gets he literally gets Frankenstein monstered to uh back to life when um when a character from the previous movie goes goes to his grave to to make sure he's dead. By like decapitate by by impaling him, he grabs a metal like fence post from the cemetery. It's storming out. He of course jabs it into the into into Jason's like chest to make sure he's rightfully dead. Lightning strikes it, <laughs> bringing Jason back to life as a revenant. Nice. So yeah, in the deep lore of J- of the of the Friday the Thirteenth movies, Jason isn't the killer in the first movie. He's also not a zombie or a, or like a supernatural entity until like two or three more movies over. <laughs> wow. Yeah. <laughs> so all of his like superhuman strength and like 
ability to shrug. Well, he's off still like, this. yeah, he's still super strong and some of that in like the first couple of movie, first couple of uh, movies. But it's not till like he becomes an actual like Frankenstein's monster revenant that he starts getting those even more like ridiculous. Like some of his his abilities to survive get even more like kind of supported. <laughs> oh, okay. So yeah. he, does he get stronger in that movie, or is it just he's the same power level, but this is why? I think he gets a little bit stronger. He also just like yeah, because he can he can take uh quite a lot yeah. by uh by that point too. So I feel like before that he was just completely powered by his own rage yeah of, of watching his mom die yeah and like just taking revenge on the on the campers yeah like all the human limiters are removed which which is something that could happen like i mean, not i mean like it's it's extraordinary but it's still something that could happen yeah it's akin to someone on drugs basically yeah on pcp or like when a mother will can lift it uh, lift a, a car to to save a to save their child like yep. it's that kind of like feat of strength mm-hmm. so I mean, you could use your arms. You don't have to use your feet, but yes. I will fucking murder you, like Jason <laughs> Voorhees. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> my uh, my tangent off side. Yeah, that's, uh, I was like, I really dig the the rain, like like the this this connection the creature has to the rain because I like that in uh, I like that elemental connection. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the next thing here, I think this is going to be my last one. Um, so we're going to start with this, or, and, and we, we start it with this quote. You want to know, or you wanted to know why dark clouds make me tremble, and the thought of rain makes me want to piss my pants. It's because I know that the next rain, it will draw closer and closer to me. And today, it looks like the heaviest rain yet. So this is a pretty classic ending to a horror story. I can kind of dig it. But I do have two things that kind of irk me about that last little bit. Um, first one, the the piss my pants bit kind of <laughs> steals the <clears throat> thunder of the spookiness. <laughs> just just a tad. Like, you want to know why I piss my pants whenever <laughs> rain happens? It's like, that's not as cool as you think it is. Yeah. <laughs> That's, that's... It, 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 he pisses his pants when it rains, so nobody realizes he's pissing his pants. Mm-hmm. Like it's the equivalent of like somebody like uh, somebody telling you a, a, like a, a cool like like uh, like it's it's the equivalent of like Ryan Reynolds from the Amityville horror movie where he was actually playing a serious character and like a diabolical character suddenly breaking into Deadpool ter- like speak where he's like. You want to know why I wear the brown pants? Yeah. <laughs> like, it, it kind of, like, goes from there. Like, it, it's, like, it kind of steals the thunder of the story, of, like, the spookiness and the seriousness. A little bit, yeah. Just just, just a little bit, yeah. So, it, it, like, that was the first thing. Secondly, I got to throw another plot point, another, like, plot hole into the story. You could just, you know, leave and head <laughs> to a desert. <laughs> Like, sure, it does still rain in deserts, but not that often. I straight up Hence looked desert. up the precipitation amounts for different yeah. areas of the world. <laughs> but also, yeah. like, yes, you're right, mm-hmm. but how yeah. easy is it to just move to Egypt? Well, well, okay, yeah, yes, move to. <laughs> I, I was thinking, like, if, I assume this man. I assume the the uh, like. Uh, I think much like the author. I assume like the uh, or I'm assuming this guy since he's like from. He's not from Nicaragua. He's probably from the states. So it's like, yeah, just just let the, let this creature try and travel to the states after you while you set up in like Phoenix, Arizona, which yeah. is like one of the driest fucking locations in in the states. Uh it's not the most ideal situation, of course. Like you're going to have to abandon your old life, but at least you're alive. <laughs> yeah, S- seems like you've just given up, which is kind of weird because you just had the chutzpah to bunker up inside of a shack to survive from this creature, and then plow oh. down the the mountain first chance you got to escape it. Is this guy from Durpland? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, actually, <laughs> like I get it. Like I, I, I get like that. This is some like a lot, a, a lot of the time in horror, like it's kind of an economic thing. It's like, well, I mean, like the reason why the person's living and staying in a in a haunted house is because they can't afford to like leave. They've invested all their money into this house that they just bought, 
and it turned out it's, it's haunted or there's something with it. There is that kind of like economic horror of like, you can't just leave the house because otherwise you're going to be homeless. Same thing with this situation. Like he might not see, he may not, he may not, or the, the narrator may not feel like they have a choice because if they, because they have been like, kind of like brainwashed or like pushed into this situation of like economic situation. Like, well, if I leave, I'll be homeless and like, Oh God, like I don't want to be homeless at the same time. And they're not thinking about the fact that, yeah, but if you stay, you're dead. <laughs> yeah. So they've just given up because they're, they're they've 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 rolled their sand check against helplessness. <laughs> should I stay or should I go? <laughs> yeah, yeah. They rolled their for 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 Red Markets fans listening. He rolled his self control check mm. and failed. It critically failed, and is just like I guess I'll just die. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> if he stays, there will be trouble. But if, but if goes, he stays, it will be double, right? <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> it'll be the money and the fact that it's still chasing him. Yeah. Wait, is it if I stay there will be trouble, and if I go there will be double? I believe so. Yeah. That, then that is definitely adequate, like an adequate like song line for this. <laughs> it's like mm-hmm. he's stuck between a rock and a a rock and a hairy place. place. Yeah. <laughs> did we? Did you say hairy? I did. <laughs> Get out of my head! <laughs> no. Oh no, now I, so wait, am I gonna start dreaming of gamer walking through the woods in the rain, slowly approaching my house to kill me? <laughs> no, like 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 dreaming of like that I like I'm like through your eyes, like coming to my house to kill me in the rain. You might witness that if that was a thing I ever did, which I don't. I never go to your house. That's actually nearby, and I could walk over there. And I know exactly where your window is. It's that little short window that like looks over your bed. It's a really good vantage point to watch you while you sleep. Sorry, you want to continue with your notes, please? Uh, I think I'm done. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Mikey, the East Ends for Evil. Uh, your your actual thoughts as I start, you know, grabbing some wood and pl- some wooden planks to board up my windows. What are you doing that for? <laughs> no reason. Oh, okay. Well, uh, to just continue the thought that you were having, um, you don't. could just go to a place. <laughs> not, not the most recent thought. <laughs> not the most recent thought, no, no, but the yeah. story. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. Yes, uh, let's go that. Let's yeah. do that. Uh, so, uh, he could just go to a place where rain doesn't exist. Like, <laughs> man! <laughs> I'm going to the one place that has not been corrupted by rain. <laughs> Spice! Spice! That's true. Yeah, it's very true, yeah. Just, uh, just, um, bribe NASA to t- to send you up to the, uh, the International Space Center. Mm-hmm. Or the, the International Space Station. They need questionably, uh, capable, like, clinic workers up there, right? Yeah, no, they need, they probably need some medical, some medical staff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, and then uh, the other spot um, I thought of would be um, the the Arctic, because it doesn't rain; it snows. Yeah, it, but then, then the creature just becomes a white version of the of the of the monsters, like through the snow. Yeti, you know. Yeah, exactly. It stops being a yeah. It's, it just become it just changes much like like some a- Arctic animals that change their co- like uh like change their uh, their fur color from like dark like dark colors to like a white color. It just it, as soon as he gets into like the northern region, he just starts like cha- his his hair starts changing to white as he just becomes like a, a yeti. <laughs> like yeah, like if he's there, just gamer. tied to precipitation in general. Yeah, because what is snow if not just very cold rain. <laughs> yes. <laughs> if he is a precipitation aber- aberration or whatever. Yeah. I, that's actually pretty cool. I like a uh, precipitation aberration. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Another option would be underground. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. If that counts. It depends if he Maybe. works on like latitude longitude or if it's proximity to the actual raindrops. Like the person yeah. that he's targeted. True. Mm-hmm. So basically, if he uses Google, like Google Maps, to find him, then it doesn't matter. 
Well, it, it definitely seems like the creature has like a psychic link to him because like it, it leaps up into the top of the trees overseeing its domain and then just like be like just like just uh beelines its vision to Esteli, like where he is. <laughs> I, and starts heading towards, us, and then drops down and starts heading in that direction. It's like, oh, he's he's got like a link of some kind yeah. to to Nair. So I do wonder how long he can quote unquote survive not in the rain because the old man he got to his house, broke in inside the house where it's not raining, grabbed him and left. But if you yeah. lived deep enough underground, like even if he got to the entrance of the cave, if it's a ten minute like run to get underground to wherever the hell you are then i like how you went like with with a cave i I was thinking more like a bunker (laughs) well no because if you break through the door of the bunker you're in it bam you're um it's hang on a second hey hang on hang on i i'm pretty sure a bunker door would be more heavily fortified than a fucking shack door of rotten wood it is yes but and I'm not saying, okay, it still may yeah. be able to break through it regardless in time. Yeah. And if it ever does break through it, you're right there. So, so it's really better than guy- a shack, but if it literally can't survive without being rained on in like every two minutes or something like that, then as long as you are two two minutes sprint away from it, it can't get to you. That's true. So really, like the my desert suggestion actually does is a lot more appealing. He just has to have a bunker out in the desert, and just watch the forecast. Because first off, you're never gonna you're very you're very rarely gonna have rain, and when you do have rain, you'll have this other contingency. Oh God! Now that I think about it, too, if <laughs> he only shows up in the rain, and then the rain How's... goes away. Is he like literally running underneath the clouds? Like he's following the clouds. <laughs> he's literally following the rain as it is like transpiring and then he has to huddle out somewhere to hide away so that he doesn't like until the next rain goes by and then he has to start heading that direction again <laughs> that's what i was saying it was like good luck trying to travel to the states to ke- uh to catch this guy who's out now in in phoenix arizona <laughs> like because he has to get from like nicaragua all the way up north to like to like arizona like if, if you wanted to, if you were going that route yeah. it's like good luck fucker <laughs> You're gonna you're gonna be here a while. You're gonna be there a while. I'm just trying to think. Which would like give the Nair of how this guy works, though. <laughs> yeah, I know it's it's well. He's a super. He's he's clearly some kind of supernatural entity. So he could all he could also logic, just be though. Like, the uh, logic of sometimes it can only get you when it's raining in the rain. Yeah, there. Yeah, he he. De- yeah, he definitely has a um. Uh, what is it called? It's like not a bane. I I think. The the game Knights Black Agents actually does it for has it has it for vampires where they have like a they have something that they have to they have to follow they have like a a nature or some of some or like a habit they have to follow. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to remember it I, uh, as I'm pulling up the. Uh, Either way, he the only. Uh, it seems like he can only get to you in the rain, and when the rain leaves, he also leaves. Yeah, he has a compulsion. That's what it is. Yeah, where it has to be. He has to be in. Uh, he can only attack during rain during uh, heavy rains. And if that means he just has to run back to his cave, then what's the difference of him being in a cave or him being in your house? Yeah, well, that's exactly it. Like he doesn't. Yeah, like as long as it's raining on, uh, like on your vicinity, he has a stronger. Like he he has a stronger presence. I think. Man, we got really also because I said heavy rain. Like it, like uh, like get stuck in heavy rain. All I can think of is that Nair's name is now Jason, and then the creature's like. To Jason, to Jason, Jason, to Jason. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I uh, yeah. I'm we're getting critically silly. We're we're hitting critical mass on silliness at this point. Speaking of critically silly, did you see that there was a mod for that stray game that replaced the cat's meow with Jason? <laughs> Are you fucking serious? I am dead serious. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's 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 move this back to the topic at hand. Okay. I so, guess. Yeah. So, so Mikey, I th- I think it was your I think it was still your yes thing. I I we we went way out into the weeds there. Yeah, we went All right, right out into the campo. <laughs> All right. Uh, did anyone else notice how large the creature's hands are? Yeah, but the size uh, of like a a, a a human head or like a size head. of a head, a pig's head. Yeah. 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 Well, 
It grabbed a tree, and I saw its hairy fingers wrap completely around the tree trunk. And he's eight. And it's, he is eight foot tall, and his mm-hmm. oh no, and his leg and his arms stretch beyond his knees. Is is this guy DK mode? <laughs> yeah, he is. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> I I still think that's terrifying. Like I know you don't like. I, I know you don't find that terrifying. I still think somebody who is in DK mode in reality is still fucking terrifying. Well, just like anything in reality that isn't supposed to be there, that alone makes it terrifying. Yeah, because it's the uncanny valley, or it's the um, like it, those, pro- those. It shouldn't be those proportions. Just, Our minds aren't used to seeing something in that proportion. Yeah, Sorry. but like anything, like if freaking Captain Selenum showed up and he's like, hey, look what I learned. And she goes, summons lightning. I'd be like, uh, that's not normal. I'm terrified Yeah, you, now. You, you, you're internally rolling a sand check or a stress check. Yeah, it doesn't matter how cool or weird it is. It's horrifying regardless because it's a not supposed to be here. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> and is that is that, yeah. that that's what that's what you were getting at though, right, Mikey? Like we didn't just yep. like bulldoze over your <laughs> your your spot. Yep. Okay, so cool. You're basically <laughs> saying how huge the hands are, and the, are you saying that they're bigger than what's described? Because it said the fist is bigger than the pig's head. Well, we we don't know how big the pig was. We also yeah, don't know big how pig. big the tree is that he grabbed. That is yeah. also true. So... Though, if this creature do, if this creature can like beef up its fists to grab onto a whole tree or what have you like or maybe it's like constantly in flux of like its proportions are always changing and shifting like, it like the, the rain tree and then its fingers kind of grow out around it yeah exactly yeah it's as fluid as the rain oh uh... well So that's the end of my actual thought. Oh, okay. Gamer, you're up. That means it's my turn. Okay. There are my notes. They're there. <laughs> Very first line. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I am not I'm drunk. not drunk. You're drunk. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I am not drunk. I only had a few drinks to calm myself to steady my nerves so I could tell you the whole story. Okay, so he is drunk then, and this whole story is being fabricated. No! Because <laughs> if someone bitch. is drunk and you say, dude, you're drunk, what's the first thing he says? I swear to God, drunk. I am not drunk. Or, sorry, I am. Swear, yeah. I swear to drunk, I am not God, is what they usually yeah. say in that case. But, yeah. The whole thing's probably just not real. <laughs> God damn it. That's fine. I'll move on. Uh, this was kind of talked about, but I'll bring it up again. It's technically a grammar thing, but whatever. I thought the old Campesino was insane too when uh, he told me at first. And that Campesino means farmer or peasant, and it's basically like uh, hillbilly. hillbilly. Yeah. But yeah. it just says it straight like that. And then a paragraph later, when it brings it up, it gives it a full definition. The full hmm. definition should go first. Um, I suppose. I mean, I'm not going to fight you on it, but I don't. I I, I kind of disagree. We had an entire bit where we I know, talked about I know. how and, uh, the words should have a, an English definition after them, and, and when it does, they do, it just takes a little bit. And when they do, it should be first. Yeah, and then after that, you don't need to say it anymore because it's already been um, told to us what the English definition is. I, I know we had that conversation, and I again, I'm not going to fight you on this. She washy. Yeah, this is your, this is your, this is your opinion, but I do kind of disagree with. Like, I I do think it's fine the way it is, but Why? I will concede. Why? So. No, I'm not. I'm not fighting you. Like, <laughs> continue. Be Sorry. gone, wishy washy. Leave him. <laughs> the power of Cthulhu compels you. How dare you speak his name? I could speak his name if I want to. <laughs> Move on though. <clears throat> I will move on though. Okay. Uh, so he he being there goes to see the old man, and the old man tells him what's going on. Wait, was this the first time? Regardless, I, I think this is when he goes to him. Regardless, he's listening to the old man's story, and the old man tells him things. 
Yeah. He says, I told him the only thing that I could think of that his dreams were just dreams. I didn't take him seriously. So this guy is being sent out here to look after this guy and find out what the hell's going on. And he proceeds to not. Like, what does he mean? He doesn't take him seriously. The man clearly hasn't been able to He's... sleep at this point. Let me finish. And yep. you told us that you quote unquote earned a name for yourself as handling the mental cases that the doctors seemed beneath their expertise. So because of that, he apparently has some chops in regards to dealing with uh, different people's mental mental like cases and stuff like that. Yet he is doing nothing to help this man right now. That is true. Yeah. He is kind of dropping the ball. He should also be reprimanded. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Hence why when you said he's from Derpland, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, he is definitely from Derpland. Because he, he basically sat down, listened to his story, and he's like, yeah, no, I'm going to go home. Yeah, That's basically what he did. Yeah, because like I, I get like I kind of get it. It's like yeah, he he went up there. He doesn't believe it, obviously, because who would believe that kind of story? So he tracks up to just being a uh, uh, a uh, just dreams, just being dreams. However, he also states that this guy should probably go seek some kind of help, like or like therapy and stuff of like that. Maybe he should have brought up some prescription like drugs that like aren't too bad for him to take not to even help that. His... He, I'm just yeah, like yeah. Okay. he has some. Um, dealings with people that have mental issues before. He's dealt with them before. Yeah. He's, I'm assuming, helped people before, because if he didn't, he wouldn't have gotten this job, if he always drops the ball like this. So, yeah, not just like saying, like, oh, you need to go to a doctor or you need these drugs here. He should be doing something to try to help there. And yes, believing someone or not has nothing to do with giving someone mental help. Yeah. If someone says that they're seeing something, you don't say, no, that's not real. Shut up and get out of my office. You say, tell me about it. Because you want to learn exactly. about it and see yeah. what the hell is going on. And he's not doing any of that. Yeah, he, he's not diagnosing the problem at all. No, when I was reading this, and it got to the point when he's starting to tell his story, while I'm reading it in my head, I'm like, okay, well, this is what's probably going to happen. Because this guy should know what he's doing. So he's probably going to think of something like, on that rainy night... When he, he being the old man, felt someone was watching him, it was probably just an ordinary animal of some kind. And then on his walk, walk back to town, his imagination took over and created a what if scenario of it being some huge monster. And then through his paranoia mm -hmm. of that feeling, either subconscious or otherwise, that crept into his dreams. And as subtle yeah. as it might be in the real world, he might be suffering from some form of PTSD that's tied to the sound of rain. Hence why it only comes out when he hears rain, when he's sleeping. Like that is a rational thing that someone that has more credibility than I do should be telling this guy. Yeah. But he just like, Oh, they're just dreams and walks away. Yeah. <laughs> like that's my whole yeah. point. That's the biggest yeah nail in the coffin of this story is the fact that this guy that's here to help him doesn't help him. That's fair. Immediately no, paints that's him in a horrible light. Yeah. No, that is actually a good point. Like, it, like why he should have like had some, he should have like, there should have been a, a scene at least, at least a scene in the story where Nair is trying to like talk him down off of what's happening and like rationalize what he, what, what he's going through before leaving. <laughs> Like not just some like it almost seems like at, at, at best it's just summarized like oh you're just he I, I just told him that he, uh, his dreams are just that dreams like that at best is a summary and at worst just like not giving us all the information of like what happened with the, your your conversation with him and like your therapy session essentially yeah because at guy. this point um the daughter would have been better off asking. Uh, any family members or any friends of him to go talk to him because they would actually give a shit. They would actually ask yeah. him like what's causing this or anything, not just listen to him and then leave because he's on the clock <laughs> or because he's yeah. like obligated to, because of his job just to listen. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That whole part really irked me. But I, I can yeah. I can, I can see it. Like, no, well, honestly, like now that you bring it up, like I can kind of see it and it's like, not even like, it would ruin the story's like horror angle. It's like, no, it would actually, it would still like the horror still works. It's just this needed to be added. Yeah, exactly. 
Yeah. Because it's not like this is the exact reason. This is what happened. There is no horror. It's all just fabricated. This is what, like, if you watch any horror movie and someone says that they're seeing shit, someone will give you a rational explanation of what happens. And then the weird shit still happens because it's, yeah. And then, and it's like, yeah, exactly. It's like, yeah, we get the, we get the, the, that guy, the rational, the, the rationale of like, oh no, it's not, it's nothing bad. It's you're all, it's just in your head and stuff. Like, we need to talk about this and try and figure it out. And then the monster comes bashing through the door. It's like, fuck you. It's not psychosis. It's me. Supernatural. Yeah. And he straight up like, kills the freaking therapist. <laughs> like, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's a trope. Honestly, way, that's, but I, it's a trope I, for a reason because it's effective. Honestly, it's a trope that doesn't happen enough. I feel oh, okay. like, especially in, in horror movies, like, okay. Horror movies are supposed to be like exciting and like, they're supposed to be a break from reality. Uh, and it's supposed to show the impossible in reality in on the screen. I find a lot of the time when it, when you're dealing with things where like the character's trying to grip with their psychosis or something like that, it always gets chucked up. It's like, oh, it was all in their head by the end, and they were actually in an in an asylum or something like that. And it's like I really can't. It's it's so overdone. That trope is so overdone that I want to have like the scene where like the door gets kicked open and the supernatural comes barreling in. Yeah, for sure. And it was actually something supernatural rather than a psychosis. You're also one for um, not seeing and just believing. Oh, no, no. I Like, okay, not seeing as in, like, not seeing all the details. Like, I, I want some stuff. And I do like, I do like it when a, sto- when a story in a movie, like, makes you question what, what happened. But as long as there's also some evidence to suggest that there is actually a supernatural thing element here, and it wasn't, like, it isn't just, like, confirmed to be a psychosis. You're you're okay with the yeah. giant horrible monster showing up, but you're not okay with the giant horrible monster showing up and some guy that's knowledgeable on him opening up the baby book of how this monster was born. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> that makes sense. until those until like uh, okay even that <laughs> is like there it not to be wishy washy again. Oh, don't worry, you haven't been <laughs> never no. <laughs> But like I, I do also just I also do like to know what the monster's all about. But in a movie, when like the characters shouldn't know anything about the monster, yes. that's what I when I like that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, because it keeps you more immersed yeah. in it. Because you as a viewer only know what the characters what know. The... Exactly. Hmm. Okay, we good. But please continue. Sorry. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and then this is basically immediately after. Could he tell he was disappointed? Yeah. Could he tell he was disappointed that I couldn't believe in him? But I I think I've missed the start of that quote. I could tell that the, I, I could tell yeah, that he was disappointed. I, yeah. I could tell that he was disappointed that I didn't believe in him or believe him. But I had thought but I had thought who could believe a story like that? You'd have to be insane to take dreams for reality. So first off, foreshadowing much. Um Yeah. Second off, he didn't say anything about thinking that he was seeing or thinking that what he was seeing was actually happening right now, just that he was f- afraid to sleep because of what he would dream next. So where is this coming from? Yeah, it's sort of, it's, I think in this case, like it's the author kind of accidentally like tripping over their idea. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like, if you want that to be established, that he is seeing something that's happening right now, then prove it. Or or have the duty at least say it because this just yeah. comes out of nowhere. Yeah, he's projecting. <laughs> yeah, a little. And then uh, right after the uh, the fiasco with the 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 nurse not giving him the the message after a few days, I may have my notes out of order. It doesn't matter. Um, she realized the urgency of the message. I asked if she had received any more calls from him, but she had not. I broke one of the rules of the clinic and used my cell phone to call the number. Why? Uh, that's actually something that happens in work in work um, uh, workplaces is that they don't want you using your personal phone, uh, or you shouldn't have even have your personal phone on you um, when you're uh, like when you're on when you're on shift. That's not what I'm talking like about. Like you're... Okay, sorry. Why <laughs> is he using his personal cell phone when he's listening to a message? That's probably right beside the damn yeah. phone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, why? Yeah, you know, I, I would have, you know what? Yeah. Yeah. yeah <laughs> like, yeah. 
It's like you go to the answering machine. Also, plugged into the phone. I gotta call this guy. He pulls out his cell phone. Meanwhile, there's a phone on the freaking table. Also, I gotta ask why, like, does the old man have a phone and a phone line up front to his shack up in the mountains, or was he calling down in the community? It wasn't established. Yeah, but I like like based on the description of the shack, I don't think it's ever established that there's like working lights in it. It doesn't say that there um, isn't. It doesn't say that there isn't also. Yeah, and like there could be a power line that goes all the way up there. It's just like, yeah, it, it was like it's it doesn't establish that at all. It's like and and the way I was like seeing the shell the his his shack his shack and stuff is like I did not actually see that it had like any electricity for like personally. He also but, has his number, which would mean that he called him previously. Yeah, so maybe he had a cell phone. Yeah, you know, like the old man, like might have had a cell yeah, phone. Yeah, that's possible. Yeah. In which case, like he could have found the cell phone, like, uh, in and around the the, the shack, like entrance, like as the, where the guy got pulled out. Yep. Yeah. That could have been added to the story to make it better. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I do agree. Yeah, sorry for for stepping on your toes there at the beginning. Like, uh, like I do agree. It's like, yeah, the phone. The why did he use the phone? Of the office, like of the hospital, it's right there. It's like he's right he's, there. He's a rebel, man. <laughs> he can't operate by the their rules, by the man's rules. I'm gonna break the rules, even though there's a phone right there. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's weird. He's from Durbland. Yeah, because it did say they're listening to the message, so it's not like she wrote it down. No, yeah, no. It was an It was a. It was a message machine yeah. of some kind. But I will move on. Okay. I managed to run into his daughter. She recognized me from the clinic and asked why I was visiting. I lied and said that it was a procedure to check up on people that came in and I needed to speak to the Viejo. How do you, sp- how do you pronounce that? I keep saying it. Viejo. Viejo? Yeah. Okay. To the Viejo. And um, I'm going to say this again, but let me finish. Why? Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> because. Yeah, no, I know. Yeah. Because like, why lie? There is a possible serious problem with her father. <laughs> he may be going insane or is already dead because it's been three days and you don't bring it up. Hang on, hang on. He does not, did not say it was three days. They said a couple of days. Said a That's, few days. That could still be two. I could say two. That could be two days. Two days is three plus. Is it yes, really? Yes, it is. couple yep. is two. Oh, okay. Interesting. So three plus um, days. <laughs> Also, like, maybe he doesn't want to, like, scare the daughter. Okay, but, like, <laughs> why would you not bring it up that he called in? Like, yeah. Especially when, like, cutting to later. Hang on. Well, I'll get to that in a bit. Hang on. I'll, either way, I'm surprised that he didn't say something because that's what he's there for. What is the purpose of lying? That's what I'm trying to say. Especially when he doesn't exactly know where the hell he even lives. Yeah. He's asking around. Yeah, and if anyone should be told it should be the daughter, which is the only like next yeah. of kin he knows. Yeah. Yeah. She definitely should have been pulled into the story to go up to the the shack with yeah, him. For sure. But uh, anyways. Nah, nah, he's gonna lie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then um either way, uh, she says, uh she told me or uh, rather he says she told me that the Viejo, did I say that right again? Viejo. Viejo. Okay. Yeah. She told me that the Viejo went up. I'm going to say old man. <laughs> she told That's me that fine. the old man went up to the mountains at the start of the winter and couldn't come down until harvest. At one o'clock, I decided to go up to the old man's shack and try to help him. What did you do? Did you have lunch? Did you go shopping? Did you go see a movie? You're in a rush to check on this poor man. I, I I assumed it was like he was he, he was uh he kept getting lost on his way up to the no, mountain like up the mountain. He left town. Oh yeah, this is when he's like leisurely invest like asking people around like, hey, do you know where this, this guy is? After is? that, it's like, oh no, but the last oh, is after that, he so runs okay, into is the daughter, and the daughter says, up yeah. in the mountains, and then it says, at one o'clock, I decided to go up, as in in the future. At wait, one wait, wait! I decided <laughs> yeah, to leave. Like, I just. Uh, I decided now was a good time to leave. No, not now. At one o'clock. No, it's potentially no, no, yeah, no, o'clock I mean, right now. 
I, I'm I'm sorry. I I meant like at one o'clock. He's like, all right. Now that I finished my coffee, now is a good time to leave. Yeah, so that's that's what I meant. That's what it felt like. Yeah, because it's one thing if it's like it was one o'clock and I decided I had to go up to like go see him or something, you know. But at one o'clock yeah. makes it seem seem like it's like time is passing. I I think I could. I'm just speculating, but I think at this point it should be like it should be rewritten somewhere, or it should be rewritten a bit because. It sounds to me like the author wanted to be like, he's like naming us. It's one o'clock now, like as he's like, uh, as he's about to go up that hill, like after talking to the daughter or up, up that mountain to, after, after he talked to the daughter. So like at the the time now is currently one o'clock. He's and it's like to kind of give us like a, a time frame of like when, like how long it's going to take him to get up there. And then when it's going to be nightfall and stuff like that. But the time, is but the way it sounds matter in the story at all. No, but I think the author, that's what the author is doing in the story. Like, cause like, at, like then he gets up there and then there's a torrential rain and it's already been a couple of hours for him to get up to the mountain. And then he has to wait out the rain for a couple more hours and then it starts getting dark. So like there is a time frame, there is a timeline in the story. And I think that's where the one o'clock is coming from. However, the way it's written in the story is where you're kind of coming from. And, and I, I get why you're coming from that. And I think that needs to be, that's why it needs to be fixed. <laughs> yeah. Because it being said the specific times has no bearing on the story because there's no time sensitive thing here, especially since it's been three days since he's been killed. Um, yeah. Well, well, he doesn't know that know, he could still be fine up there either yeah. way. But the yeah. biggest problem is the fact that it's not saying that like, after I spoke with her, it was three o'clock. It was getting on in the day. I had to get going right yeah. now. It said, no, I'm yeah. waiting until one to leave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's, that's what it sounds yeah. like. And that's wrong. <laughs> yeah but i will move on i did my best to remember the path i had taken with his friend but i i must have gotten turned around somewhere because i arrived a few hours later after three o'clock oh sorry around three o'clock a few hours later around three o'clock boy it sure is a shame that you didn't just bump into the guy's daughter who would be able to take you there especially if this is an emergency right goddamn derp landers You see why when you said he's from Derpland, I'm like, yes. <laughs> Immediately. Yes. Yeah. You're like, yeah. No hesitation. Yeah. Just yes. Goddamn Derpland. Which, for those unaware, Derpland is a a uh, made up uh, town. It's our head canon for like people who are like where people come from when they're stupid yeah, in horror movies. In, in, in these stories. Mm-hmm. Isn't there an actual. Or when they're not acting well. I don't think so. I thought you looked it up and there actually was, and we had to preface that we're, oh. we're not referencing them directly. <laughs> <laughs> did we? Did I? I think so. I re- seem to recall that. Uh, Derpland is the... A, it's like a meme kind of thing. Uh, Derpland is a nation in Europe bordered by France, Italy, and Spain. Uh, but I, I think it's like an internet thing. It's not actually like a a real thing. Um... Are you super sure? I, I'm not super sure. Uh, I also don't. I, let's, let, 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 me, let me Google map Derpland and see what we get. Oh, nothing. The dank <laughs> Republic of Derpland. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's where I think I think that's where we originally hear, heard from was like the dank. Yeah, the dank Republic. Was it the dank Republic? The dank Republic of Derpland is what's on the future of Europe's wiki, which is obviously yeah, that's, a joke yeah. because the flag looks like an absolute joke. Yeah, and exactly. I, yeah. I'm not that's, saying I think that that's to where make fun of them. It has a silly, crappily drawn smiley face on the flag. Yeah, so it's not a real place. But yeah, that's the. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so that's I think where we're like we where we found out that it was like an actual place or something like that was, but it was not an actual place. It's just this like this internet wiki site. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> moving on. There's a on tangents a lot here but that's fine mm-hmm. <laughs> the, the, the tangibly is just given up they're just like fuck it <laughs> they're just gonna keep doing send it. in the tactical nuke <laughs> yeah <laughs> nuke the site for more but only way to be sure <laughs> but anyways I'll move on yes uh hang on wait wait and I gotta look something up because this may have messed with this a little bit No, that was me summarizing that. I can go with that. Okay. Oh. 
uh, there surveys the shack, believing that there's that someone broke in, fought the old man, dragged him out. Old man trying to hang on the doorway gets ripped away and all that. Mm-hmm. And then he says, um, the "Ring continued as night fell. I killed time by toying with the machete. Call the cops. There's a yeah. missing man. You have a cell phone. A ransacked cabin. <laughs> Call it in." You established earlier that you have a phone. Yeah. Stop incriminating yourself by toying with evidence. Yeah, because he pulled this machete out of the wall. And <laughs> yeah, he's fucked. Like, oh my god. Such a dirt blander. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Shit. Because goddamn. Yeah. And then speaking of surveying the area. I found that the dirt had been clawed and displaced at spots. I followed the path as it started in the middle of the room and worked its way to the door. It was in the doorway that I found something that made me want to run screaming into the night. So, based on how this is said, when I originally read it, it made me feel like it was going in a werewolf situation. Like the old man changed near the middle of the room and was stumbling around to get out of the house. It said the path started in the middle of the room. Yeah. Like what if so, like what as if he creature... was getting to the door, he oh. was holding on to it and like his claws pushed his normal human nails out into the door. Oh, I just had a th- so you might have the same thought here. What if the creature like in the dreams is actually some kind of a spirit that possesses the 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 people that it's uh, that are, that are, it's it's linked to. And when it finally reaches them, it possesses them and transforms them into a flesh form. Of the of the spirit, yeah. So it didn't exist until it actually grabbed him. Yeah, not not physically, it didn't exist. Mm-hmm. Um, and so the, all the flailing and the struggle is actually just the man transforming into this creature. Kind of like wishy washy has possessed me. I mean, what? <laughs> <laughs> wow, how topical. <laughs> yes, but yeah, and then now that's now now narrator like Nair doesn't and he Nair doesn't know what happened to the old man because like the old man just like he's. It took three years. It's three years. It, it took might three days for him to get. <laughs> yeah, basically, it took three days for him to get up to the fucking shack, and by that point, the guy's three gone. Hours. So, like, yeah. Oh no, three days to get there, and then another three hours to get there. Yeah. Like three days and three, three days and three hours. Yeah. So, anyway, so yeah, like he, the guy's not there. Like the creature that might have been the that might have been the old man. The um, is, is the creature that it was like stalking around the house. Or stalking around the shack uh, while Nair was in there, and then basically the spirit creature like went away. The rain stopped. Maybe maybe when the rains stop, the the uh, the uh, the spirit like drains the body that it's possessing, and then like makes it useless, and then it becomes a spirit again, links to the next victim, yep. and and waits for the next rain. Hell, maybe to, just turn back them. into the old man. Yeah, yeah, maybe the old man's fine. <laughs> He's just out in the out in the wilderness, naked somewhere until the next rain. Yeah, yeah. Or or maybe 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 the creature just like um, bums rides from body to body. Yep. So like, it's not even a permanent thing. Like he's not like going to be possessed again. It's just like, yeah. It's just the 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 farmer had had bad luck of of being the target of the of the uh, of the creature. He has a new target now. Yeah. All those are. Wow, I actually kind of like that. <laughs> I I legitimately love that idea way more than the Bigfoot idea. Yeah. Like I know uh, this this is inspired by a myth by a by a legend in Nicaragua, but I fucking love that idea of like a spirit that stalks in the in the rain and uh, and forests of of Nicaragua and turn people into man beasts at a certain point like bef- and before that they 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 start dreaming of the of the creature slowly like approaching them and stalking them mm-hmm. like i i fucking love that idea that is such a cool idea for a horror story and i wish that was the canon of the story it's not. <laughs> not not at least at least not 100 <laughs> percent. no it's not <laughs> yeah i know i know i'll move on yes i began to entertain the thought that i would be stuck up in the mountains until morning. I wouldn't have any problem sleeping in the hammock. A hammock of a man that was aggressively torn from his home, never to be seen of again, house ransacked. Wait. And he's fine with just sleeping in the hammock. Plot hole as well. 
the hammock was torn off the support beam, which is sl- like, which is like, doesn't look structurally sound anymore. Oh, I'm not done. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I just I just realized that I was like, wait, how is he in the hammock? The hammock was on the ground, like like ripped from the from its it mooring. Was like how the fuck until did that... he got uh he got some nails, he got a hammer, he got a broom, started cleaning up a little bit, hooked up the hammock. <laughs> he had to have because later on it says he's sitting on the hammock. Yeah. But this Thus obstructing evidence of the scene yep. of the crime. That as well. But um, the main reason I brought this up, though, is I wish this whole situation was made a lot more concerning because Nair doesn't seem to really care that he is needing to stay on site of an upcoming murder investigation. <laughs> like, I would be standing in the yeah. doorway or on the porch if there was a porch, not just chilling yeah. like in the dude's hammock and like playing with his machete. The man was taken and possibly mm-hmm. killed in this room. And you, quote unquote, yeah, I would don't have any using problem. my cell phone. <laughs> and a, a man was taken and possibly killed in this room. And you, quote unquote, don't have any problem sleeping in the hammock. I would have many problems sleeping in this dead man's yeah. hammock. <laughs> yeah, it's mm. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot wrong with this uh, this plot line. Yeah, there is. But I will move on. I was taken in by a concerned villager. This is after the fact, obviously, when he leaves. But yeah. No matter how hard he pressed the topic, he couldn't get me to talk. They say that they found a dent on the door bearing no mark of a human hand. He wanted to hear about how the old man was doing, but I knew to open up about that would break the floodgates open and drive me insane. So, this concerned villager lets him in, pressing Nair to yep. tell him what's wrong. Nair tells him nothing. Yet, he wanted to hear about how the old man was doing. How could he know about that if he didn't tell him anything at all? Unless he just happened to be one of the random people he questioned earlier before he ran into the daughter. Yeah, which it should have stated. It's like, I, I end up running into one of the people I talked to earlier. Yeah, or he, he brought up a random occurrence of being introduced to someone's family, at, like trying to get hooked up with them, bring them back. Yeah. So it's not just a one-off Also... Joke. Also, I I kind of you probably are going to cover this about the the hand about the handprint. Oh, the the handprint in the in the door, or like in the uh, in the the in the metal door or something. They say or was that, that they found a dent in the door bearing no mark of a human hand. Yeah, and then it immediately goes after. It's like the guy wanted to know how the how the old man was doing. Yeah, it's just it's said and it's gone <laughs> like, and that's it. Yeah, it's like, why is that there? Like, where is like the doorway of the shack? Did somebody go up there to the shack to in, to, to investigate? Like, did was the was it the door of the of the the person who found Nair? No, I think he's talking about the shack. Like his door. Is, then who? Part, like, I, I, I yeah. yeah, no, I get you. I just like. But I was like, about to go into that, but who is why, the they in this okay. situation? Because it says they say they found a dent in the door. Who is they? These people exactly. that he just went to. That he just got yeah there. exactly there's no way they went up there yeah and then like then if they if they saw that why are they asking this guy like oh is the old man okay yeah. <laughs> like how's the old it's man it's not doing? talking about they as in these people <laughs> i think it's talking about the cops investigation after the fact aka this is him Maybe. talking about it yeah. not in the timeline okay so then it's, it's yeah, another it's, section it's in a where weird it awkward position out by itself yeah, not in the flow of the uh, the current timeline sentences. Yeah, for sure. And uh, a little bit later on, it says the old man was right. It was stalking him in his dreams, and now it's stalking me. Oh my god! <laughs> moving on. God. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah, Fair enough. Sad. Fair enough. Yep. And then the last thing we basically talked about is. It looks like it's going to rain again. What am I going to do? Move to Egypt. Apparently, they only get 18 millimeters of rain per year. That's the, that's the nice. fact that I looked up for that. Nice. Yes, and I went for the American one. Phoenix, Arizona, from what I know, is like the like one of the driest locations. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> it's still a ways away, but at yeah. least you don't have to go across the pond. At least, not, And at least you know you're not going to die. <laughs> like, just People yeah, live in just Egypt? What are you talking about? <laughs> No, no, no. I mean, like, oh, I mean, like, yeah. yeah, like, leave, leave this location where you're going to die for certain, or 
leave and go somewhere to like where you're gonna have to like deal with like an economic struggle but at least you're still alive yeah. even if he just goes up to mexico mexico gets half the rain that nicaragua gets like less than half nice so just yeah. keep going north until you that find you... a place that's more suitable yeah exactly but no yeah, yeah. We could have had like a road trip of him being chased by this creature. Yeah. God, it just if we're, if we're gonna keep the idea of like it like possessing other like possessing people to be, to manifest, it's like it just keeps like possessing people and like going after him because it wants yeah, him. Yeah, he's the one that's getting like, away. He's the yeah, yeah, he's the one that got away. Oh my god, this is slowly becoming a buddy horror. <laughs> I don't know if it's a buddy horror. He's gonna murder him. From a Moby no, he Dick just wants to possess him. He just, wa- he just wants to. He just wants to give him a ride. He just wants to go, go for a ride with uh-huh. him. <laughs> like literally, go That's for true, a ride yeah. in him. In him. Ooh. Oh my. Ooh. But that's the end of my notes. Okay. Well, I suppose we'll move on to final thoughts mm-hmm. then. So, I liked <laughs> the plot. I liked the investigative setup, and. I like the monster because it's cool and a bit a bit mysterious, and it leads to a lot of conversation, like we've mm-hmm. just been having. But the by the end, from like at the start, the reason why I was going to partially recommend the story was because by the end, it sort of falls flat on its face. With this conversation <laughs> that we've had, I'm actually downgrading it to a not recommendation. That's fair because. This, yeah, like it, 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 this story is a, like I said earlier, this story is a classic horror movie, like, or like a classic horror story kind of vibes. Unfortunately, it's also like that with all of the kind of dumb tropes that, and, and pitfalls that characters often, like character archetypes often have in those stories where they're from Derpland and they don't do things that they should logically because do. Because there'd be no movie slash story otherwise. Yeah. So like the monster's cool. I like the location. Like I like the I like the work that was done to like set up the location of and like give us like the translated like location things and some of that. But by the end of the story, it kind of like just logically and like plot wise, there's a there's a there's too many plot holes. My car is just like <laughs> blah, 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 blah. like my the bottom of my car is just like broken by the by the plot by the amount of plot holes on the road of the mm-hmm. story. So yeah, I am downgrading my partial recommendation to a negative rec- or to a non recommendation just because it does kind of need some work on like the because like the stuff that we talked about like the the like the, the the problems could easily be fixed in a rewrite. Anything could be fixed with a rewrite. Like, yeah, like even to, like okay, it's like okay, he he pulls out his cell phone to call the cops. Cell phone's dead has no has no reception up in yeah. the mountains. Yeah, Done. I would be totally fine with that. <laughs> exactly yeah like we need yeah you need that kind of, like the details and stuff that we brought up we fixed those problems in our conversations as well so yeah i think i think honestly like i can't recommend it as is right now maybe if it had a bit of a rewrite or some edits i could maybe recommend it but as it is right now i'm gonna actually have to go with a non-recommendation so uh mikey these stands for evil hey, let's see here so I started with a partial recommendation. Uh, I think I'm still going to at least low partial. <laughs> okay, so you've downgraded to a low partial. Yeah. Um, the The monster was interesting, although we did find the... I, I think everyone found that well. Go to a spot where there's less rain. Yeah. Bam. <laughs> yeah. Why? Why are you? Why are you giving up? You survived. Yeah. Like that, uh, that's the for me was the biggest um, issue. Is like, oh, it's coming for me, but I could just go somewhere that doesn't have rain. Is it a possible fugue oh, yeah. state from his sand roll? It, it might have been that. <laughs> a, either again, like either he's cracked in his in his uh, he's cracked in mm-hmm. trauma. Uh, or perhaps stress, uh, depending on the humanity track you're using in the red markets uh, for your stress, your stress check. Um, or, or he might even have crumbled at this point. It might have gone like two through two tracks of humanity. Um, or yeah, he failed a sand roll from like Call of Cthulhu or Delta Green, 
and he failed it hard. And so he's just in this like fugue state. It's like, what? Like by the, he, he re-rolled it when, uh, like he, he was rolling, he was failing sand checks the whole time he was going up there. He had the fight, he had the, the flight, uh, the flight response for most of them. And then when he got down to the, the safety away from the mountain, he rolled one last sand check because of the dreams he was having and realizing that he was going to be stalked again. And that's when he entered the fugue yep. state. And I, I, I like the, the theory that the monster was the uh, farmer, mm. yeah, the old man. Um, which leads me to the next thing. Like, what if that's how this monster procreates? Is that it infests your mind, and then you become one, and then someone goes looking for you, and then and then another just... like a yeah, like another one like like or it like it leaves that body, which is now a monster, and goes and finds its next its next target. Yeah, and, I and see what uh, and. Yeah, what if the um, coming in contact with the monster or whatever gives you the reverse of hydrophobia? Oh, where you you need to have rain? Like hydrophilia? Yes. You have hydrophilia. Yeah. <laughs> even attraction to rain. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or attraction to water, yeah. I kind of like that. It, it, it adds on even extra to like the where like to this like new take on a werewolf myth or like a, a mon- like a like that kind of like a lycanthropy kind of myth where like it is it's adding on the, the contagion element as well. Mm-hmm. Like the creature, the, the spirit is pos- possesses you, turns you into this monster, leaves your body, which is now a monstrous body and like a monstrous creature to, to, to go about your day and, and, and to do your thing. And like, that's how it all spreads. It moves on to the next one as a spirit and then does the same process over and over. Kind of cool. Mm-hmm. As if it um, infected the mind of the old man, Turned him into the yeah. uh, uh, the Sasquatch thing, ran out all that, yeah. and then Nair shows up, and he gets infected by the spirit. When he sees it out there, he's seeing basically the spirit, and the spirit chooses him as his target. But the spirit isn't actually yeah. there or manifested at all. And when he's it's, seeing it, he's yeah. just seeing it in his head. He's just seeing yeah exactly like, like if someone else was there they'd be like there's no one out there even though there's clearly a freaking sasquatch stand there and when it comes in and smashes against the door it's just the door smashes in it's like paranormal activity or, situation where there's a huge hit of something but there's nothing there behind it because it's just the spirit hitting it it's basically just spooking him or yeah it's it's weakening his yeah. willpower so that it can possess him. So and like again, like a lot of times in hauntings and stuff, like spirits don't actually like damage the um the the doors and stuff. They just sla- they make slamming sounds. Like so, hence why this suddenly this big bulky creature couldn't break down a rotten wood door. That's true. Yeah. Like. Uh-huh. So I, I like that. And then yeah, if the daughter was there, <laughs> we could get some kind of uh, some kind of hint or affirm- affirmation about like. He's he's the only one that seems to be able to see it, or like wh- whenever she goes to look for it, it's already gone. To kind of like kind of keep it up in the air a little bit of like, is it in his head or is it actually just being supernatural and like not and she's not being able to see it? And then by the end, it's like we it's it kind of we kind of get the revelation is like no, it's 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 kind of it's chosen him as his next victim and stuff like that. And that's all because of the uh, the uh, it was it was all it it, it had gotten to his head mm-hmm. already. I really like this. Also, this has the potential to open up into a monster apocalypse. That's true. Because <laughs> it keeps spread. Because if it keeps yeah, this spreading, this is very highly ranked on the uh, um, SCP. Yeah, yeah. This is yeah, or the, the SNTF, SNTF like our own like ranking. Yeah, Supernatural Task Force. And God, I. <sighs> What I also if... want to, sorry, sorry, I also want to bump mine back up to a, a partial now. We're talking about things that aren't because the story. potential. <laughs> I know, I know, but because of the potential of the story. But yeah, no, I'm still, re- I'm still not recommending. I'm sorry. I'll zip it. And what if the spirit only affects people from Derpland? <laughs> well, then it, it's a Wait. benevolent spirit for sure. <laughs> Cleansing the world of idiots. <laughs> <laughs> but wait, that would mean that like the old man and his like the old man was That's also fine. from Durpland. <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> Who says he isn't? Yeah, I guess. He didn't say the ethnicity of him. Although he seemed... even the ethnicity. Yeah, did, he in did Durpland. say he did kind of he did. 
No, that's true. It did. It did also kind of insinuate that like he was a local, mm-hmm. like a native, so like a native of the area. So, but who knows? Maybe there are different. Maybe every continent has a derp land. <laughs> It's like every town has an Elm Street. Ha ha ha. Oh, that Elm, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street TV show was so weird. Good. Yep. Awesome. That, that's my recommendation. All right. So on to Gamer in Yellow, Attorney at Law. Oh, it? <laughs> okay. Um... Well, because like you've like it's like you've 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 turned the you've turned the court around a little bit. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um. But yeah. For me, my recommendation is still no. It's another Bigfoot yeah. story, which in itself isn't necessarily a bad thing, I suppose. But I ran into a lot of problems that irked me along the way quite a bit, as I'm sure you heard. There is a doctor yep. who specializes <laughs> as in dealing with patients with mental problems, yet does nothing to help them. He has a phone, but refuses to use it to call the cops. Like, there's simple things that people should do, but don't. Like, the nurse wa- waiting three days to give Nair a message. It's just so the plot can happen, you know? I mean, it, that kind of incompetency, like, I, I will fight you on that. That The incompetency does happen. So that is kind of, lo- that that's kind of realistic, in a way. That's like fine. That incompetence. But, but she should be reprimanded yeah. for it. it seems yes, like it's and... just normal. Like, he took it like, oh, three days ago? Yeah, that's for, that's for recent. That's normal. Yeah, like she she's like feeling worse off than he did. Like, I mean, mind you, like the way it said, he he like brought her in. It's like uh, this this happened by the way, and it's like oh shit, like and like, but then that's the we're, that's the most we see about that. Like, we don't see her getting reprimanded, which granted we don't need to see her reprimanded. However, it's overshadowed by him using his phone, <laughs> yeah, to call the guy when there's a phone right fucking there. <laughs> Like, I don't need it to cut to her boss and having a, a yeah. five paragraph discussion of her being ripped up and down about um, about waiting a few days on this. But, like, yeah. Nair should be like, a few days? What the hell? Yeah. Why is also, it's, a few days like, old? What's on this? Even like, it's like, I, I, left the, I left the clinic, and uh, as I overheard uh, uh, our head of staff uh, reprimanding my, uh, the nurse for her tardiness. <laughs> Sure, that too. But even just something quick, like what I said with Nair saying, like a few days old. Where has this been? And then play it like one sentence long, just something that anyone would actually be saying. Yeah. Like reading throughout this, I found myself saying out loud, "Why?" Like multiple (laughs) times as I'm reading this. Maybe it's just the way my brain works, but I, I don't know. It just it really bugged me. No, I mean you you've definitely poked a lot of holes into the story that are kind of valid po- plot holes that need to be addressed. Yeah, I like to think that so. they're not really a stretch or nothing cuz they're just kind of there. Yeah. But all this aside, story doesn't really do anything with what it does have unfortunately. Like Bigfoot's out there, he takes people. And the element of the dreams, yeah. I still chalk up to paranoia and it's not supernatural at all. I hate that though. Like, I it has to be supernatural for me. Like, why? Because I like that shit. I, I'd rather it not be that kind of situation. I mean, I, I I'm not like fighting you on it. I just like I like I'm gonna my head cannon. It's gonna be supernatural. That's not gonna be, um, a mundane like paranoia. That's fine. Yeah, and I too would like it to be supernatural, but unfortunately, there's nothing in the story that backs up the fact that it's supernatural because all of it could just be shit that they're seeing in their dreams and it's not connected to the real world because there is no proof. And simple proof could just be like I had a dream that I was a Bigfoot man and I was just outside of town and um uh I saw my daughter walking down the street with some groceries and she slipped and, and hurt her knee. And then that morning he sees her and she has a, a scratch on her knee. And he's like you yes. tripped with your groceries. And you're like how would you know that? Like, something like yes. that. That would definitely amplify what is already in the story for yeah. that. Yeah. And with all that being said, the potential of the story is good if you actually dial up the dial or crank up the dial on the supernatural, because that's what it seems like you're trying to do with this. It's not supposed to just be a Bigfoot story. It's a supernatural Bigfoot story that teleports through the rain and control people and can like telepathically connect through your mind. But yeah, that part isn't focused on, even though it should be. To the point that I read through the entire story, seeing it as mundane, mundane, quote unquote, because there's actually a Bigfoot out there. But 
the Bigfoot as just it's an animal that shows up and it likes attacking in the rain because it makes noise. It covers up its tracks. Noise does, but I don't know. And, yeah, honestly, that could be it as well. It's like that, but yeah. There's a mundane explanation for everything, and Ugh. nothing supernatural is actually um, shown. Also, I like how I have very big distaste for you when you're uh, when you're when you're making something mundane, and then when when Mikey does it, I'm like half the time I'm like okay with it. <laughs> it's because you hate me. That's true. I do hate <laughs> you. Uh, yeah, that's fine. But yeah, that's that's my view on it. Not recommended in its current okay. state, but if it was dialed up on the supernatural, it could be really good because it would be a unique take on Bigfoot. Right now, it's just it's another normal take on Bigfoot, in my opinion. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess that's going to be then a a week point five uh, out of three. I suppose. Um, like a lot of potential. I want I want to preface this. a lot of potential. Just the execution falls flat. Yeah, and I know it sounds like oh we're we're, we're being better. It does sound like, like my better. idea is yeah. better than yours. If it was my idea, I'd rate it a ten out of ten. Like obviously everyone's own idea is going to be better than what someone else's idea is because everyone has their own idea of what something is good for them is. Yeah. You know, just it's all opinions. That's unfortunate. That's unfortunately yes. the way this all is. And these are our opinions regardless. Yeah. I, I'm sure I speak for everyone. Even if we don't like your story, be it this one or someone else's story, it doesn't mean that it shouldn't exist. And it's good that of it's course. out there because a lot of people don't actually get their words down at all because they don't have the balls to do it or if you don't exactly. want to use balls you can use gumption if you want something more gender neutral but <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> I, i've that... recently watched a couple of, of shows where people basically bring up that like why why are balls with uh, have to do with like being courageous like they're they're small and sensitive <laughs> you know fair yeah fair enough it's more of just a machoism kind of thing. yeah basically That's where it comes from. But yeah, no, I, again, like, yeah, like we're not saying again, our recommendations are just like that. We would not recommend the story to somebody that is that like minded to us. Yeah, that's like minded to us. Like if they were looking for a creepy story because we read the story and it's like it has some problems. And so the person will probably like think if, if they are similar to our mind of a line of thinking, they might think the same way. Mm-hmm. It's not that we we're like, no, the story should not exist. Why is it here? Blah, blah, blah. That's not what we're trying to get at at all. No, of course not. So. Uh, and I hope no one out there actually like takes that kind of method, like what we're doing. And like, we're just, we're, we're a couple of friends that are, that read creepy pastas. Three of us were a few. There are a few <laughs> friends. <laughs> Fuck you gamer. <laughs> we're, we're, we're a few friends that read creepy stories from online and talk about them and then rate them how we would rate. Like if we were to recommend them to other friends. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's the point of the show. Um, but that has been this week's episode so if you like what you heard or if you didn't leave us a comment in the comment section below where this gets posted whether it be on Podbean, Facebook, YouTube or Tumblr uh, we're all on Twitter so you can yell, us th- uh, yell, yell at us there <laughs> uh, Mikey is at the East Ends for Evil the Gamer in Yellow is at the Gamer in Yellow but without that W at the end because it's very long it's a bit at this point Yep, can't change it Yep, and I'm at Review Cultist you can also send us emails at aldente rigamortis at gmail.com. That's A L D E N T E R I G A M O R T I S at gmail.com. Where you can also leave us suggestions for other creepypastas, SCPs, spooky things. You creep it, we'll peep it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and if you'd like to help support our show financially, you can go to Patreon, look up Aldente Rigamortis, and select the back of tier you'd like to support us at. We have $2 and $5 tier with special episodes, early access, and extra content. For our patrons that are helping support the show, thank you guys immensely. You're helping keep those hosting bills at bay. And as always, we very much appreciate that. Uh, And to our listeners and the authors of these stories, thank you immensely. Because your listenership, it would be like screaming into the void. And without your authorship, without your stories that you have the the gumption to post online and, and share with other people we really wouldn't have much of a show because we'd have nothing to talk about. Like we talked for two fucking hours about the potential of this story. <laughs> yeah, we sure did. Yeah. So like, yeah. And I don't hate, like, I, I don't regret it. <laughs> like this is like, like, this is what I love to do. This is what I love about the show is that we get to like read it, read a story for good or bad or that, that we like it or not. And then we talk about why we liked it or why we didn't like it. Like that's the whole point of the show. 
Mm-hmm. So, uh, but until next time, I have been your host, Review Cultist. I'm Mikey. D stands for evil. And I'm the gamer in yellow. And this has been Al Dente Rigamortis. Sleep well.